All right, we back. My expert opinion, the greatest show in the world, 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 world. It sound kind of empty though. Yeah. yeah. Really. Everybody <laughs> got to say it. I together. forgot to tell y'all. Yeah. I forgot yeah. to tell y'all that, yeah. You got to gotta add that to the notes. All right, yeah, let's do that again. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right, we back. My expert opinion, the greatest show in the world, 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 world. Hit that like, hit that share, let everybody know you in here. Of course, you know paper unless you was a mother. Hater, 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 it's free. Hater, hater. It's free. It's free. It's free. Yeah. You can check your account right after you click. With the Swiss beatbox. <laughs> mm. NRM, how you doing, sir? Who? NRM. Never no. really moving? Man. <laughs> He don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> we'll talk about it later. Like piece of the game. Guess it's funny game. to somebody. Piece of the game. Oh, this is going to be real funny. Everything's good. Everything's well. I'm happy to be here amongst legends. Happy to be free, not in prison. Amongst beautiful people, man. Shout out to everybody out there that subscribed, that likes, that shares, that comments. Keep it coming. I think it's less than 60% of people now that are watching and actually subscribe. Right. So shout out to y'all for that. Yeah, shout out to y'all. Keep that for motion. Keep and when I see you button. in the street and I ask you to pull out your phone to see if you subscribe, you better have that subscribe Yeah, make sure, yeah, it. man, don't be shouting, yo, man, damn. I love the show and you ain't down. subscribed. Like, damn. We done caught a couple of y'all out there, man. <laughs> Hit that button. Not tonight. We got a legend in the game. When it comes to, to media, personality, Strong personalities, mm -hmm. very strong personalities, almost intimidating sometimes. <laughs> <to rappers. laughs> we definitely going to talk about that. Um, you know, he's been in this for years and hopefully he could drop some gems on us. You know, we're, we're kind of the newbies here. Um, guy at Lover in the Build. Thank you. Yay. I will drink to that. I will drink to that. <laughs> How you doing, sir? Nah, what's good, man? What's good, I'm gentlemen? Sure. I'm so sure. 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 Pleasure to be here, man. I'm a fan. I subscribe. Good, good. <laughs> I had to ask to see your phone. I had to a long time ago. I subscribe, I watch. This is a dope-ass show, man. I'm happy to be here, man. Thank, Thank you, bro. You. Thank you, bro. Well, you know you bro. fathered a lot of this, bro. Like, yeah, whether, facts. whether they give you the credit for it or not, you've influenced this genre so deeply that by the time it gets back around to you, people don't know where they got it from. Right. But a lot of this is yours. Hey, man, I just got it from the people that I looked up to. Like, when I was coming up, I remember as a kid, man, you'd be outside in New York City, you, whatever you're doing, you're playing. When it was 8 o'clock, you know it was 8 o'clock because the radio was going, and Frankie Crocker would play the same song mm. every night exactly mm. at 8 o'clock. You would hear, there I go, there I go, there I go. That's when he was <laughs> signing off. That was his song to sign off, so you knew exactly what time it was. So mm -hmm. OGs like him and OGs like Bugsy. Bugsy's my OG. Those are the guys that I looked up to, man. Jeff Fox and cats like that and Chuck Leonard and all of them old guys and the K2U cats like Carlos De Jesus. Mm -hmm. Them were the dudes that I used to look up to, man. Mm -hmm. But yeah. you transferred it to camera. Like that that radio thing was one thing, but you brought the personality and, and transferred it to the viewership. It wasn't easy. I was scared to death when I got you on TV, Rats, bro. If you look at the... Real early episodes, like the first year, we were mm. scared to death, man. We were yeah. just happy to fucking be on TV. <laughs> like you, was, you said you were scared to death? Scared wow, to death. I don't, I don't believe that. Scared man. to okay. death, bro. Didn't have no contract with MTV at wow. all. We was on for a half an hour. We didn't know what the fuck the show was going to do. So we was just, we was doing it, bro. We was just, Let's I was scared to death. It was my first time on television like that. I had no communications background from school or nothing. It was that. And they just put us out there and was like, go. No no direction from nobody, no notes, I mean, no... It, okay, so I got to ask, is... Uh, Ralph McDaniels in that list of yeah. people? Yeah, hell yeah. Video Music Box? Yeah. Huge. Huge for us. Because, you know, before Video Music Box a long time ago, they had this show that used to come on, I think it was Friday or Saturday, it was called Hot Tracks. 
hot. New York hot Yeah, New York hot track. And it used to come on, but Ralph gave us that. They wasn't really playing hip hop like that. Ralph right. gave us the videos that we didn't see, that we yeah. didn't even know artists had videos. Yeah. Right? Ralph gave us that stuff. So, and Ralph used to live in a house where I ended up, when I was in a band, I used to practice in that house. Ralph lived in that same house, and Ralph mm. was from our neighborhood. So we knew Ralph. So Ralph was hugely influential on uh, what we were doing. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Ralph mm. actually tried to take video music box to MTV. Yeah. And MTV told him no. And then later on, they came with your MTV, MTV rap. So Ralph was super, super influential. Did you ever have a conversation with him about yeah, it? Yeah, I tell him every, every time I see him. Every time I, I run into Ralph, and I'm, I'm saying it right now again, right here, Ralph was a super influence on everything that we were doing, but Ralph did it Ralph's way. I had to do it my oh, way. Man. I couldn't I couldn't do it Ralph's way. Right. I just had to be who I am. I couldn't be Ralph. It's only one of him. Right. You know what I mean? Right. So and then Fab was doing, because you remember Fab came Fab before. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Fab came in 88, me and Dre came in 89. So because Fab was so downtown cool, graph writer, real close to Bastiat, Debbie Harry, all of them people like Fab knew we were. I wasn't cool like Fab, so Dre and I were humorous. So we injected the humor in. Right. We right. were the kids in the basement showing videos that lit on a block for you. That's what we were. That's mm. all we knew how to do. Now you said scared to death. I beg to differ, because that N.W.A. Uh, segment that y'all did. We're easy? Yeah, yeah nice. I was comfortable then. By the time, oh, oh my God, bro. I, was, well, I think we was at an hour at that time. I right. think we was on for an hour. Oh, so this, this when was When we after, first started, okay. we was a half an hour. Right. So you saw Dre and I maybe three times during the show. And then we did a, then we said, we did a voiceover to say goodbye. They didn't even show us. We, after the last video, we talked. That was it for y'all, TV Rats, man. We love y'all. Thank y'all so much for watching. See ya. And it's a kind of round of C-YA on the screen. You didn't even see us. By the time the NWA thing came around, I was super comfortable by then, bro. Mm -hmm. I was comfortable. We was on five days a week. And by that time, yeah. that NWA rolled around. It was six days because we had a countdown show, too. So being with Easy and them out there in Compton, I was super comfortable by then. Super, so, super dumb mm -hmm. comfortable. Yo, what was going on? That day, cause we were the the, the <laughs> but break it down for me because the guys of the famous Easy E episode is we supposed to be going to get chicken, and that was what we were supposed to be doing by interviewing NWA. Let's go eat. Let's go do this. Let's go do that. Right. And Easy was always you know laid back, cool, wouldn't say much, right. and everything. So my man Stretch, God rest his soul, from the Loud Squad. We used to do this thing with each other where we always say we put each other in a smash. So you put your hand on the head like, yo, son. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yo, 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 don't disrespect me. So I did it easy. Right. And then easy grabbed me and he whispered something in my ear. And I was like, oh, okay, I'm not telling nobody. Why you? No, you got to wait for that book to find out exactly exactly what he said. Give me half the sentence. But that was, he was like, the one thing he said was chill or else you ain't going to be able to. And I knew what the, and it wasn't a threat. Yeah. It definitely wasn't a threat. Easy was not that kind of dude. Yeah, right. It wasn't a threat. Matter of fact, Easy kind of saved me in LA one time because we mm. went to the um, Slauson Swap meet with NWA and I had on the wrong color jacket and hat. What did you I have was in Crip territory wearing all red. Mm. And Easy took us into the Swap meet and immediately bought me a jacket and a black hat because he was like, it's not something that an OG will do to you. It's one of the kids, yeah, yeah. right? So yeah. he was like, "We don't." He's like, "You got to put that in the car before we even got out." He's like, "Hey, you got to take off that jacket and that hat and leave it in the car." I didn't know what you know. I didn't know nothing about that Crips right. blood stuff. Right. So mm -hmm. Easy saved us, man, for real. Mm -hmm. Easy was the coolest cat, man. He was just—he's a dope dude, bro. Yeah, rest dope in dude. peace. Boy, and he used to have the wildest ass pool parties. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> and then Dre took it over. No, it was easy. It was easy. Though. Those yeah. were easy E's wet and wild pool parties oh, at his house in Calabasas. Oh my lord. What was Bro, that? when I tell you easy said easy took a, a page out of the Luke book. That's how Luke used to get his records played. Right. Whenever there was those, you know, those uh Jack the Rapper conventions mm -hmm. or whatever that was going on, Luke would always bring in a whole bunch of strippers and invite all the record industry execs upstairs and the mm -hmm. strippers is all over the place and he's throwing money all over the place and yeah. you remember yeah. that, you know, Luke, that moment. Yeah, that yeah. yeah. that's how Luke was. And right. then Easy took a page out of his book 
by mm-hmm. doing Easy Easy Way Wild pool parties at his house in Calabasas. But you can't really picture a bunch of strippers twerking to NWA records. They want they have to twerk. Say Easy is gonna make sure that you take care. <laughs> mm. Easy is gonna make sure when he told you to go into a certain room, you were in that certain room. You was, <laughs> you was taking You're care. Taking care. Of. Wow. Yeah, you was taking care. Okay. Of. Yeah, we went to Luke. We went to Luke. We landed in Miami. And we interviewing Luke. And you know how you get to the to the airport back in them days? It wasn't no like suburbans or no shit like that. It was limos. So we get there and there's a sign that says Ed Lover, another guy says Dr. Dre, another guy says T Money, another guy says Ted Demi. And it's limos for all of us. Mm. So he opened the door to get in the limo. I get in the limo. There's two strippers in mm. the limo waiting for me. Mm. He took care of me all the way to the hotel, courtesy of Luke. So I'm getting out of the hotel. I'm pulling my pants up in front of the hotel. I'm getting my shirt back on together. I'm getting out. They get out behind me. And they go, no, no. Luke said we with you all night. You mm. got us all night. That's how Luke, Luke was a genius in that shit. Mm, <laughs> you know Luke. what happened when we got back? That's Luke. Mean. We playing Luke. We playing Luke. 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 We playing Luke. We playing Luke. There was a time when they used to let us like theme a whole day. We did, we doing all Luke videos. All day long with your TV, it worked. <laughs> Luke was a genius, bro. He was a genius. We got and the music Easy Easy took a page time. out of that book. Bro. It, uh, uh, all right, I ain't trying to get nobody in trouble because they already think I am. Um, what, 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 what? Is that like staring people to play records? Is that is what? Is, is, is it a form of payola? Is it, yeah. Was it, was it regulated Slayola? by that? Slayola? Slayola? Smash Ola? Smash Ola? Yes. Smash Ola. The FCC didn't regulate that. You, you right. could get money, you could take care of it a different way. Right. But right. that's what they did. They took care of us, man. Smash Ola. Mm. It's Smash, Smash Ola. Because at that time, <laughs> we had we programmed the Young TV Raps. A lot right. of people don't know Which that. Which is crazy. Bro. Yeah. We didn't know. We didn't know no better. If I knew what I then, what I know now, I probably went to Russell and say, you don't give me a hundred thousand. I'm not playing any more mm, Def Jam records shit. ever because we weren't regulated by the FCC. Wow. Mm. Not like radio. Wow. You can't. You're not supposed to quote unquote take money to play records on the radio, but mm-hmm. you know. But we weren't. So we just happy to be there, man. We had, you know, we played. As long as it clear standards and practices on MTV, we would go to Ted's office like a Wednesday or a Tuesday, and we would program. These videos are out now. Okay, we're going to play this. We're going to play that. You see that new Kane joint? Now nah, play that. Put the beta in. You know, because they sent all the stuff up to us. And we, oh, we're playing that. We're going to play this. That's how we right. did it. Mm, so MTV's early hip-hop culture was directly crafted by Fat Five Freddy, Ed Love, and Dr. Jones. No, it was crafted by Ted Demi. Okay. And Peter Doherty. They gave you the yes and no on what to Peter Doherty was overseas in England. And as a young lady by the name of Sophie Brownwell, I had a show called Yo, but they played everything. Hmm. Ted was the one that was a hip hop dude that I knew Ted from when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. You know, Ted, his father, you come from Episcopalian family in Rockville Center, Long Island. And my homeboy, my best friend, Kurt Flirt, his mom's Hmm. was heavy in Episcopalian. So whenever they had their little retreats or they get togethers or whatever, she always brought me along to keep Kurt out of trouble. And I met Ted. We had to be like 13, 14 years old. Mm -hmm. And that little white boy knew everything that there was about hip hop. He knew everything that I knew. So when he finally got in at MTV, he got with Peter and they cultivated and crafted your MTV raps and took it to the bigs. And the bigs was like, well, who are we going to get? Fab is the coolest dude on the planet. Let's get Fab to host it. Mm -hmm. And then once it went daily, Fab was doing so much other stuff like directing and you know, Fab directed a lot of videos for a lot of different people. Yeah. Mm. And he just was like, I don't want to overexpose myself by doing a daily show. And boom. Because well, once I you? saw Fab, no, once I saw Fab, I started calling Ted. Because oh. I knew Ted. I saw his name on the screen. Mm-hmm. Produced by Ted Demi. I was at somebody's house because I was in Queens. We didn't even have MTV at that point. And I was like, yo, I got to get on this. Like, I started calling Ted. I was like, he was like, come down to a shoot. I can't, I'll never forget. They were shooting something with Fab at Central Park. And I was there just watching. I was like, Ted, you got to let me do a record report or a fashion report. Now let me do something on this show, man. I love hip hop. I know hip hop. Fast forward, they decided to do a daily show. Ted calls me to come in and audition. When I get to the audition, Dre is sitting there. Dre was a road DJ for the Beastie Boys. Peter knew Dre. Mm-hmm. So he called Dre. And then 
Pete, Dre had went in and he was off in Peter's office somewhere. And I went in and, and uh, Ted put me on tape. And then Ted said, wait a minute. He called Peter's office. He says, Dr. Dre still there? He said, yeah, send him down. So he sent them down. And he put me and Dre on tape together, hmm. like doing a Jamaican accent or something like that, something crazy. <laughs> Ted had been in Jamaica. You know the wig that had the dreadlocks? He had like <laughs> two of them. Me and Dre put them on. And we, I was like, you Jamaican, right, Dre? We, I, I never knew Dre. That's I didn't know crazy. Dre at all. You I, swear y'all was childhood friends. No, the way I did not know Dre. I listened to Dre on the Delphi radio sometimes if the antenna was right, I could catch it, right? I had no idea. I didn't know who Dre was. I knew about I knew about the group that he was in. Right. But I didn't know him personally at all. And if Ted looked at us and he said, Laurel and Hardy. Mm. He said, that's what I want right there. He said, that's Laurel, that's Hardy. That's the Daily Show. And he took it upstairs and they was like, yeah, let's go with it. Mm. That's wow. Dope. Yeah. You would wow. never guess that. I was I sitting there waiting Jay for the story all, to come out that said, we met back in. No. no T year, Money year was and up. Dre was in the fifth grade together. That's how T got on the show as your mailman. Right, he was right, Dre's right, homeboy. Right. I didn't know Dre at all. At all. That's wow. crazy. Wow. I, I want to pause something real quick. Just rewind a little bit back. All right. So that was the NWA thing that they were setting up. When you found out that, that Easy was sick, did it alarm you? Yeah. Yeah, it, it alarmed everybody because we were all pretty much doing the same kind of things that Easy was doing. Right. You know what I mean? You know, you grew up in an era where you had to ask for condoms. <laughs> Can I get some condoms? And she'd get on the microphone, condoms, please. And you'd back, right? <laughs> right. Or you had that one old ass condom that stayed in your wallet for 10 years yes. before you <laughs> used it. Right. So we was all, you know, it was those times, it was the 90s and people was fresh into new money. So a lot of dudes was just being reckless. So when Easy got sick and we found out Easy had AIDS, it scared everybody. Everybody got tested after that. Everybody. Yeah. Everybody yeah. got tested. It probably not an MC that was on the scene or anybody that was in the music business at that time that did not go get tested. Did that slow down Smash Ola? No. <laughs> you used condoms, right? It, there you, you go. It, condoms. it was Smash Ola with a condom. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but he was not not wearing a condom. The protected series. Yeah. Right. <laughs> wow. You no, know, your first time in LA, you've never been really on the West Coast like that. LA got some beautiful women. They coming at you left and right, right left and left. Right. Yeah, it yeah. was a crazy time, bro. Yeah. Something in the water out there. Yeah, it's something in the water. No, I, I, I come to realize <laughs> it, it's not something in the water. Any place where it's hot, the women have to wear less clothes, they stay in shape because they don't want to be exposed. Yeah, that's how New York, we got winter. All the chicks be hot. They good. They good. <laughs> they start they, they, working out yeah, right back. before the, the spring. Right. Right. They, they, they in the gym in the spring. Yeah. But during, during the winter, it's like they letting it go. You know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. But yeah. LA, New York Miami. is so big, right? It's, it's, it's so many people here in New York. It's just kind of weird that you can know somebody that don't know anybody in another borough. Like you could know, you can have a whole group of friends in Brooklyn that don't know your group of friends in the Bronx. Right. Mm -hmm. Right? And you can know somebody in Queens that never know anybody you know in Staten Island. Because New York is so massive. Yeah. You know, you have to go to something that they have. And you go to an event in New York, you see women you've never seen before in your life. You'd be like, where'd she come from? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But depending on where you live is how far you go to see them. Right. And depending on where they live. Because well, that's right. like an out-of-state relationship, basically. Pretty much. If you live in Queens and she live in the Bronx, that's a that's an out of state relationship. Absolutely, especially if you back in the days you ain't had no car. I had to take the number two train to the end to see this chick. Oh, so you you <laughs> speak to the right? end? Oh, oh, the, Flatbush. The, the end of the number two train. Oh, all the way uptown? All the way to that's see her. Now, now think about it. That's, I got, that's I'm in one fifty. I'm in a two fair zone. So I gotta get the bus, the bus. to yeah, the you train. From Queens to the train from the Hollis area. The Bruh. train Damn. to the city, then I got to switch over to the number two train and take that, I think, to Barnes Avenue. Well, mm. you, saved, you saved her a, a, a lot of gas, getting lost. I have no car at all, bro. Going to Queens is like, then sitting in her yo, I'm on 30 and 55th. Here we go, here we go, to Queens. I'm on 30 and 55th. It's like five of them in Queens. <laughs> bro, yeah. <laughs> Right. Like, it do get confusing out there. Yeah, it's not. Nah, it's you confusing. Don't, I hate don't, it. I hate it going to see chicks. It does. It, it's got like that for me too. Going to yeah, see yeah, women bro, out there. Bro, bro, I got bro, lost. Bro, bro, bro. We not mad start times. This. Wait, but dudes don't like That's, nowhere. Queens nowhere dudes. dudes like you to come check their chicks. Yeah, it don't matter what borough you in. If you're not from around there, they don't want you coming to check their chicks. Especially if she the baddest joint on the block. Oh my god! If you don't, you the nigga pull it up. 
You know, super like that? Yeah. Brooklyn and Far Rockaway. Facts. Yeah, absolutely. Yikes. Far Rockaway. Listen, and I'm from Queens, bro. I was born in Brooklyn, raised in Queens. Far Rock is a whole different thing. No, that's Far right. Rock is that's, that's different. That's don't Queens, even, don't but it ain't Queens. <laughs> nah, they don't like you coming don't, on don't there. Shout out to Far Rock. Shout out to Far Rock. Shout out to We love y'all, but I know what it is. Never in life. <laughs> know what it is. You don't go to Far Rockaway. Oh, yeah. Come to my crib. No. Yeah, no. Yeah, I'm, nah. from, I'm from South Jamaica. I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. We used to be Now, I'm from the, the north side, Queens Village, Hollis, all that, before Clue and them called it Shadyville. Right. It was mm. Queens Village. You didn't just lily, willy, nilly well, go to South Side looking for it. no chick. Yeah. No, that Hell was an no. issue. That was an issue. It was I, an I, issue. I, they might even want the chick. I feel like you was a part of some of that shit. He was a part of some of that bullshit. Yeah, and Hollis. Hollis pulling up. Hollis, and you like, Hollis Southside B? <laughs> Absolutely. There we go. <laughs> Absolutely. There we go. Absolutely. I feel like, yo, Jerry was just on the block just snapping on niggas like, that's who you fucking with me? Like, this chip world. You didn't go over there, bro. You didn't no. go to 40. You didn't go to nothing. And I went to high school on Southside. I went to August Look, Martin. I, you went to mm. August Martin? Yeah, they ain't want us over there, bro. Yeah. Nah, mm. it was hell. Yeah, no. mm. I had to save a couple of Harlem dudes from like projects in Brooklyn, going to check chicks. Right. Mm -mm. Crazy. Crazy. I'm still. I'm still. You got smart after a while, right, Math? You be like, but Queens dude like me be like, oh, she bad. Yo, you start talking. So where you live at, babe? I live in Marcy. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, me nah, in the nah. city. Meet me in the city. Meet me on 34 and 7. I'm not. It's a lineup. Right. It's a whole lineup. You're lining me up over there. No, you're not. Now, I'm back, yo, shout, shout to Havoc. He had a whole whole um series on that shit. Yeah. Yeah, fact. We, I didn't even mess with, kids, with chicks in Queensbridge. That was dangerous. Yeah. Yeah. yeah fact. Yeah. You didn't go to Queen. You moved 41st side of Vernon or something. You don't know nothing about over there. Queensbridge is the biggest project in the United States of America. You don't go... To the Queens Bridge, Bridge trying to check no chicken. Check. You ain't from over there? Nah, son. Bruh. <laughs> <laughs> now, now with Havoc rapping about sticking you up in the lobby. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I absolutely ran to my car in Queens Bridge one night. And I was on MTV. They gave me no pass. <laughs> <laughs> they formed on me like Voltron. Yo, she must have been bad. She was bad. Damn. My dumb ass jump out the car. I got, I got a... Uh, 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 300 Benz, mm. I jump out the car, walk her to the door of her building. Through the courtyard, man. Oh, Soon as I got no. down, look, I saw him coming, I took off. <laughs> <laughs> Heels hit me in the back of my head. That's how I was going. <laughs> <laughs> got to the car, kill. <laughs> Never coming over here again. <laughs> no. Go sure. across the 59th Street Bridge, meet me on second half. Yeah. I'll <laughs> Yeah, just in case you ain't know that. After the date, I'm putting you in a cab. That's, that's how you get the, home. The I'm hood killed the chivalry. Chivalry. The, the hood killed that. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Mm. yeah. Yo, let me get out. We'll open the door. Nah. Nah. <laughs> none of that. Patterson Projects. None of that. Nuts. Never think you hear this story from the from the dudes at MTV with the dreadlock wigs on and cracking all the jokes and like, all these. <laughs> That's how it was, tales. man. That's how it was. It really was. You just certain places you just didn't go mess with dudes chicks. That's what it. Far Rockaway, Brooklyn, Queensbridge, Left Right Projects. You ain't go over there. Not, yeah, you can't. She'd be bad to death, and I wasn't going. Mm. Meet me somewhere. And you help expose New York hip-hop to other parts of the country and vice versa yes because we didn't know that people forget people look at mtv they don't even show music videos like that anymore but there was a time when we couldn't be on mtv there was no hip-hop on the tv absolutely like period run dmc had to break those doors down. yeah before that we weren't in there we didn't know it wasn't the, the communication wasn't like it was you didn't know that they were rapping on the west coast so they were doing what they were doing in the south or in texas or in chicago and we being the epicenter of it all, our music was going out all over the place, but they didn't know the boroughs, the difference, and you know, you don't go here, you don't do this, you know. And you guys, specifically you and your partner, help bridge that gap for yeah, so many fact, people. Absolutely. We're and fact. show the fact that they were doing, they were rapping and break dancing in the Booyah tribe and these Samoans were pop locking out, yeah. out in the middle of California. Nobody yeah. thought that yeah. before y'all showed it. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. absolutely Which is nuts. It was, it, was, it was nuts for us because we got to travel all over the place and we found out real quick that there's hoods no matter where you go. 
Hmm. We didn't we didn't know. You know, you're so New York sometimes. New York yeah. encapsulates you to where you think New York is everything. Oh, there is to it. Yeah, mm-hmm. and ain't nothing else out there, right? Mm-hmm. But when we started playing videos from other people and and like too short, like life is too short and mm-hmm. stuff like that, we introduced too short to what was going on here. We introduced outcasts to, to people from New York that otherwise wouldn't have heard them. But what the beauty of hip hop was those guys quickly learned to talk to their own people and their own language. So New York was so dominant in hip hop, right? When you talk about Ron LL, Houdini, Curtis Blow, all of these guys, they used to do all of them tours, even Public Enemy and Stetson Sonic, they used to do all of them tours and all of them people would come out to see them because they was the only thing cooking, right? Mm-hmm. 81, 82, 83, like that. They were the biggest names in hip hop, and then the youngest that came behind them that decided to get into hip hop figured out quickly, I don't have to sound like I'm from New York. Mm. I can sound like I'm from here. I can use the lingo that we use right here. Like, I told Short all the time. I remember the first time we started playing Life is Too Short, I couldn't stand it. I was like, this dude is trash. (laughs) Like, I really thought Short was trash. Did you you say that on air? No, I never say it oh, okay. on the air, but... You used to we, say crazy stuff Yeah, like but that, when though. we were playing the video, I'd be like, why are we playing like... You know, you come from, let it roll, get bold, I just can't hold. You come from the Back God Rock Kim, so and then you hear, I remember how it all began. I was like, them the ABC rhymes. But he was talking to Oakland. Mm. Right. He wasn't talking to us. Right. He was talking to Oakland. He said it. Sir Too Short coming straight from Oakland, California, home of the rock. He was talking to them. He had the base in his records that Mm -hmm. Oakland liked. He didn't care about the rest of us. He Mm -hmm. cared about Oakland. Mm -hmm. And that's what made the difference. And that's when hip hop really started to expand expand and spread. The thing that we did, which was different from even Rap City, Your TV Raps was a global show. Mm -hmm. It wasn't just the United States. We were on all around the world. Dre and I went to Japan, and it was pandemonium when we got off the plane. Mm-hmm. It was global. You run into people that's 40, 43 years old, 45, from Nigeria. Oh, my God. I know to speak English watching you on your own TV raps. Mm. It was a global show. Wow. Yeah. We that's took hip hop and spread the gospel of hip hop around hip- the world. Hip hop is so big. I don't, I don't think people realized it, but even on um, uh, Ralph's show, Ralph is only second to Oprah. Yeah. Ratings at that time. Mm. That's crazy. I can imagine what your MTV raps. Yeah. Was, you know what I mean? Yeah, it was with crazy. that push, with that corporate push behind it. We didn't even really get no corporate push, bro. It it, it took off. On its own. On its own. It took off because it was MTV. It took off. We we got into the white people's living room. The mm-hmm. young white cat that liked the Beastie Boys and liked Run and mm-hmm. like Will Smith. You know, them are the guys that did the pilot for your MTV raps. Mm-hmm. You know, running them. It was from running them's tour. So we got into their living rooms, and once they got a taste of hip hop in its purest form, it was over. I was a fan, bro. I've always been a fan of hip hop. I fan out now. I was just like with Melly Mel the other day. We got a proclamation from the city council. I mm-hmm. fanned out. I can't believe that I could call these legendary dudes friends. I can't believe I know Rock him on a what's up, Ed? Mm-hmm. What's up, Rod? Mm-hmm. I was a fan. Right. Chuck mm-hmm. D still called me ADD. I can't believe that I knew this dude. I could not. I, these are the records I used to play at home. And then I had an opportunity to meet these dudes and have an opportunity to be friends with them. Like, mm. that still blow my mind that me and LL are cool. You know mm, what I mean? Yeah. LL is the reason why I stopped rapping. What? Why is that? I, because yeah. I thought I was nice till I heard yeah. it. Because <laughs> w- w- Wikipedia does have you I listed as a rapper. I, they do, and I hate yeah. that. But I thought that I was nice until I heard LL. I was like, I thought, I was like, I can handle running them. Running them was from my neighborhood. I used to rock the parks in Queens. In my section, Mm -hmm. anybody would tell you. I rocked the park. I remember I did, I used to do parody rhymes all the time. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right? So I did, when they put out my Adidas, I did my skeezers. (laughs) (laughs) Right? The skeezer was a word then. Yeah. Uh You know what I mean? Yeah. Just for for those that don't know, skeezer is a gold digger. Uh Uh Uh-huh. Uh-huh. 
a hoe that's after yeah. the brat. Excuse me. Yeah, I got black and white, white with black stripes. She like me like a zebra, but she fuck all right. And on the streets of every famous university, took my skeezers from the street and put them on TV. My skeezers were seen on the movie screen. If you saw Crush Groove, then you know what I mean. I got around the way, for them I didn't pay. So motherfuck run and DNJ. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did at the Lang Quarter. I did it at the Lang Quarter. Way before y'all TV rats, bro. No. That's how I used to get down. Niggas got me on TV. Taping a park like in Queens doing shit like that. Mm. Right. No, I'm, I know I'm in your hole. That Airbnb Rock Kim shit. I'm in your hole. Boy. Now I just came. Now listen. To no, you, you, you didn't turn. Head. I got solo. Yeah. Oh, oh God. First Wait. of all, I'm the solo with the soul controller. My dick gets longer as I get older. Constant elevation, <laughs> of course, expansion. A fucking bitch in every room of my mansion. I like all that shit, son. You're not her LL. Wow. At 15, I was like, nah, I can't fuck yeah. with this. I got to figure out another way to get to this hip hop shit. Yeah. <laughs> was just nasty, bro. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. I did a commercial with Run for the Beats of streaming service before they sold it to Apple. Mm -hmm. And I had an opportunity to just be around Run for like 15 hours. And I said, who's your toughest competition when y'all's on top of the world? He said, LL. He said, it was LL. He said, we put out Peter Piper, which UTFO had a record called Fairy Tale Lover when they were singing. And he heard it. He said, D, we got to do some shit like that, like with the nursery rhyme shit. And they came up with Peter Piper. He said he did Peter Piper, LL banged him with I Need Love. Mm. Body did. That's crazy. With I Need Love. Queens get the money. Hold on, I got a question. What was the wildest interview you did while being at your MTV reps? Like, the the three of them that stand out. My favorites or the wildest? Just the wildest. Pac. Pac. When yeah. I had to put my hand over Pac's mouth. Pac's mouth, yeah, because he was Pac, mine. Pac was just... Pac was such a fucking electric personality, man. Pac was just wild the fuck out, yo. And he's sitting there talking about how he beat up the huge brother. Oh, and I yeah. called him, they fired me. Because he's supposed to do business society. society. Right, right. You're yeah. supposed to be old dog. He's supposed to be old dog. Yeah. Right? And something happened and they fired him, but they didn't really tell him that they fired him. What, what was the thing that happened? I don't know what happened with you. He never just found told out. me that they fired him in some punk ass, snitch ass way. And he caught them in traffic or something, one of them, and beat the nigga up in L.A. But he's saying this shit while they got a lawsuit going on oh. against the nigga. Mm. He's on your TV rest with John Singleton talking about the movie they just did. And he's saying that. I'm like, Pac, fucking chill. Like, yeah. this is on tape. So I threw my <laughs> hand over his mouth. And then they subpoenaed the tape and took it to court. Damn. Wow. I think he had to do like 10 days or 15 days or some shit behind it. Yeah, mm. that was probably, that was the wildest. That was the wildest. That was the wildest. So what's your favorites? My favorite is uh, Bill Cosby for a week. We had mm. Bill Cosby on. And the reason why that's my favorite is because he called your own TV raps looking for me. Oh, wow. And they called me and told me Bill Cosby is looking for you. Here's the number. Call back. So before I called back, I remember I had seen Eddie Murphy's stand up. And he was like, Bill Cosby only called you for two reasons. Either he likes what you're doing or he thinks yeah. you're embarrassing black. And he's going to check you. Right, he's going to check me. So I'm like, shit. Like, I'm about to get checked <laughs> by a man that I idolize. Right. And so I called back and I said, hey, this is Ed Lover. Um, I got a call from Bill. She's like, oh, hi, Ed. Hold on. Mr. Cosby wants to speak to you. And put me on hold. And I'm like, Bill Cosby ain't getting on this goddamn phone. And he picked up the phone. Mm. And he started talking, hey, hey, this is Bill Cosby. I'm like, how you doing, Mr. Cosby? No, call me Bill. Please call me Bill. He's like, I'm in my office and my daughter is in the office and my daughter Erin is in there and he's just out just like he normally yeah, do. Yeah. And she's watching this show called Yo, Man, and I'm looking at you and, and you're doing this character and you got these glasses on. I said, yeah, it's what character I was doing called Perry J. Perry Winkle III. He said, man, I mm. laugh so hard. How can I come on your show? Mm. I said, you want to come on the show? He said, yeah, I'm going to come on your show, then I'll have you on my show. Mm. And I'm like, okay, bet. So we get off the phone, and I call Ted. What was his like, show at the time? The, the, Cosby, the Cosby show. show. You were the cab driver yes. on the Cosby oh, show when yes. the baby was being yes. born in the car. Yes. Yes. Oh, yes. shit. So he called, I called crazy. Ted, and we set it up. <laughs> <laughs> I called Bill Cosby back. And That's we crazy. set up the week that he's coming. He's going to do a week worth of shows with us. Mm -hmm. And it goes through MTV that Bill Cosby is coming. They had never had Bill Cosby on MTV on nothing. Mm -hmm. He's coming to do Ed Dre's show. Wow. A week worth of shows. And they got the green room set up and all the bosses are there. 
Mm -hmm. All of them, Viacom bosses, everybody is waiting. And we're waiting for Bill Cosby, and he's running a little late. And his assistant calls, said, Mr. Cosby will be there in a few. He's running a little late. He has some, and we cool. We're going to wait for Bill Cosby. They got the whole front blocked off from where his limo is going to pull off. He jumped out of a cab, <laughs> a yellow cab with a newspaper on his arm. Hey, how y'all doing? And then when we was on set shooting, everybody's on the set. And he looks at me, he goes, is all these people usually here when you shoot? I said, no. He said, who's usually here? I said, the stage manager is Moses and the cameraman and whoever's directing is up on, in the booth. He stops tape. Stop the tape. Everybody get the fuck out of here. He said, get the fuck out of here. I told him all to get the fuck out of here. He said, I will see you all once we finish. I'll talk to you all. But you're throwing off what they normally do. Get the fuck off the floor. And mm. everybody left. And that's what he did. <laughs> He never Damn. stepped from the groom room. They had all the shit laid out for him. Everything. It was cr And then he did have me on the Cosby show. I remember you did. I was, on there, I was on there twice. The first time I did it, I got cut out because the show ran too long. Okay. The second, he called me and told me that I got cut out. Mm -hmm. You know what that's like when you done told your whole family you're going to be on the Cosby show on yeah. Thursday <laughs> and then you get cut out? And that's dummy, dummy. Don't worry about it. The ill shit about that is when I got cut out and he told me, he said, don't worry, we're going to have you back. So, so all, yeah. all this is going on. Mm -hmm. You got cut off. You got cut out. I get cut out. He calls me and tells me, Ed, I'm sorry to tell you the show ran long. We had to cut your part. So I'm dejected. I got to call my whole family again and tell them I'm not going to be on the Cosby show because I got cut out. He goes, we're going to have you back. And I did not believe it. I was like, shit, that's Bill Cosby. They gave me a shot. He ain't got no, two weeks later, I'm back. And then he goes, we sitting at a table read. Back in them days, you did a table read. You came in, everybody got the script, and then you just read your part, and everybody knew what they was doing. And he starts the table read, and he goes, hey, we got Ed Lover back. And everybody starts clapping, yeah, and I'm there with, Keith, you know, with Rudy and I'm there with Olivia. She's a little ass girl. She's sitting on her mother's lap and Malcolm Jamal Warner's there. Everybody's there. They said, the good thing, Ed, is uh, can't cut you out this time because you're playing the doctor. And I start smiling. They go, no, you're playing the cab driver. <laughs> and, and this time I was such an integral part of the story yeah, that they could not cut me out of the show. Yeah, I remember that so, scene. As soon nah, as you yeah. said it, I, re right. I, re I remember yeah, yeah, that. I remember scene. that, yo. Yeah. Because crazy. Erica Alexander was cousin Pam at the time. Mm -hmm. Hip hop never showed up on television. That's the thing you had to remember. That's I know it's history. I know it's everywhere now, but back then, being this big, seeing a dude you know from the hip hop show you watch, and nobody else cared about it. Like it was just us, me and my friends watching MTV raps, video music box. And looking at all his life, and then he's on the show that my grandmother watches with us. My mother watched, my father would watch, my aunts, everybody watched the Cosby show. And here comes, and I'm the only one who knows who he is. Right. I know, like, oh shit, and I'm getting excited over the cab driver, and nobody understands why I'm <laughs> tripping <laughs> about the cab driver. What is mm -hmm. it? This, this cab driver, he's what? He's, he's just yelling well, at somebody. Like, he was so nice to Wild. me, man. He, um, when we broke for lunch, my mom's and my aunt was there. He let my mother and my aunt have lunch with him in his in his private office. He was just he was such so nice to me. And he never he never camera blocked. He had somebody camera blocked. And then he would watch it on a monitor in his office. And then he would come out and do the actual shoot stuff. So the first time when you're on the set of the Cosby show, you really think that there's an upstairs. There's no upstairs. <laughs> yeah, right, that's right. just set dressing, right, right. right? When they go upstairs, that's on the ground. They just move everything yeah, off right. and place the upstairs bedrooms. There, it's not a real, it's not a real house. You feel like you're in a real house, right? right. So, Erica Alexander goes, yeah, boom. Oh my God, I know that ain't Uncle Cliff's car. Then she opened the door and she goes, can't say that. Then she turns around and goes, Uncle Cliff, somebody hit your car. And I step into the front for you. Right. And he goes, somebody hits my car and I'm standing there. And the first time we shoot it in front of an audience, he runs down the stairs and says, I know ain't nobody hit my fucking car. <laughs> and I, 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 he did that to throw me off. <laughs> he, was, he was, man, that shit was incredible. Like, that's just something Amazing. I can say. I was on a Cosby the show. show. Yes. At the height of it, when it's the number one, one show, show in America, America, I was on a Cosby show. Wow. Mm. Yeah, that that's one. Crazy. And of course, 
James Brown. We had James Brown for a week. The Godfather Soul was on your own TV rides with me and Dre for a week. A week. For a whole week. And let me and Dre and T Money call him James. Mm. Everybody else on the set had Mr. to call Brown. him Mr. Brown. Mm -hmm. Yeah, James was on for a week, man. That blew my mind. Cause I got to tell my mom, yo, I, James Brown is here. It's what's, crazy. What's your mom say? She grew up on James Brown. Yeah. I grew up on James Brown, so it was incredible. She just couldn't believe it. She couldn't believe I had James Brown on the wow. show. It must, it must be wild to you being this bridge in hip hop and, and overseeing all these moments and then seeing what it is now versus what it what it was then versus what it is now. Like for instance, you you had Pac on the show. Pac passed away. You had Biggie. Big passed away. You you did this thing with Bill Cosby and you see what's become of that. Yeah, and like yeah. you, James Brown and then his reputation yeah, comes he's out. Gone. He was treating right. his, Did you keep those relationships up throughout the years? I kept the relationships up with a few people. I kept me and Biggie was cool, real cool. Right. Um I mean with Bill. I, at the time, I was with well, Bill. Yeah, definitely, yeah. definitely. Um, at the time, when me and Biggie was really cool because he lived in the same complex that Lily from SWV was living in. And I was my girl at the time. Mm -hmm. So when she was on the road, I used to go pick up a mail. Biggie, I remember one day I'm getting her mail out the box because it wasn't like the boxes was in front of the house. We had to go to all these mailboxes, and I'm getting her mail getting her mail and I hear somebody behind me go, oh, fool, do you? I turn around as big as, oh, suck for <laughs> Big, come on, son. Killing me right now, son. So big was, big was a great guy, man. And, then, and Pac was my man. And then Stretch was my man. And they were friends and that shit hurt. When yeah. they, when they, yeah, that hurt. Yeah. I, I, I that know that. Hurt, I, know, I know it's inevitable for us to get to that conversation. But, but after seeing what happened with Bill, were you in contact with him during the time? That no, all that no, stuff I hadn't talked. On? I hadn't talked to him in years. I'm not the kind of person that forces a relationship on right. anybody. If we stay in contact, we stay in contact. My friends that I had from growing up are still my friends right. today. I'm not a feel like I got to be friends with everybody in the industry. It's only a couple of people. That actually in the industry that I would count as like my true friends. Like Heavy D was one of them dudes. Right. Like no matter where I was at or where he was at, if we lost touch, he always found me, I always found him. Right. But right. I don't force relationships on people because a lot of it is just a working relationship for the time and then it's not there anymore. You right. know, mm -hmm. you cultivate relationships and keep relationships with a lot of people in the industry as long as you're hot. When you ain't hot no more, no more. they ain't got no use for you, right. the phone will stop ringing. So, I was never wanted to be one of those people that say, yeah, I'm hanging out with you, so that's my man. Now, we cool when I see you, and if I don't see you, I'm with my people. Right. That's how it is. Is that the lesson you learned when MTV? No, it's a lesson that I learned that my dad taught me. Hmm. Because cats, they get more money than you. They start talking slick sometimes. And you got to watch these little jokes that they be trying to say. You know, I had to tell a couple of dudes, listen, just because I'm on... TV don't mean I won't slap the taste out your fucking mouth. Don't get but me fucked up. Who? Well, I ain't gonna say. It. I ain't gonna say that. It's my job to ask who. I know. I ain't gonna say yeah. that. <laughs> but it was. It was. It was some shit that happened like a like a couple of times. Like yeah. like, dude, I'm not. I ain't no real street nigga like that. But you're yeah. not gonna disrespect me. Because yeah. my father always said, "Walk in as a man, walk out as a man." That's what he told his three sons. You walk in there as a man. Don't let nobody talk down to you because they got more money than you, because they got more prestige than you, or nothing. But they will try some little slick shit every now and then. So if I keep my distance and I'm not in your circle, you can't talk to me disrespectfully. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm not on your dick. I might like your music, but I ain't on your dick. It's two different things. I, mm. and even, I don't even think from the music standpoint. I was thinking from more of a corporate standpoint. You guys broke a lot of racial barriers at MTV, period. They didn't allow... Black right. people weren't on television in MTV back then. Right. That was y'all. Right. Period. Like right. I could I can I would expect that there would be a lot of feedback from the top. I couldn't take all the credit for that. I could say that Dre and I did the best that we can to present hip hop in the most positive and fun light mm -hmm. that we knew. But there was still Ted was there and Peter was there and those are the guys that fought for us with corporate MTV. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Those are the guys that went in and was like, leave them alone. You know, me and Dre, I met Carl Kanai walking down the street in LA. And they gave me clothes. We were the first people to wear Carl Kanai on TV. Starter used to give us clothes because MTV didn't want the logo because they weren't getting paid from Starter. Me and Dre used to leave the tags on our hat way before Bell Biv DeVoe did. 
it. Wow. Mm. So people could see that this is start of shit. Right. So it was that kind of trying to meld everything together and give other people an opportunity, especially cats like Call and Walk Aware and all of them. You shout know out I mean? to April Walker. Yeah, shout mm. out April Walker all day and Dapper Dan. We had our our young TV raps jackets made by Dapper Dan. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So that's what we were trying to do. We were just very happy to be involved in hip hop, man. It just, mm -hmm. I would never felt it was about me. I just felt it was about the culture and the music. I was happy to be a part of this shit. When you I remember we used to snap. When Public Enemy used to come on, we snap and we get letters. How are you snapping with a great black man like Chuck D? How are you taking light of the situation? But that's what Chuck was. Right. Mm -hmm. Wow. Were you getting paid what you feel like you deserve? Not at first. At first, the salary was $1,000 for one person split between Dre and I. Damn. It was $500 a week. I still worked at school safety when I first got on your on TV drive. Damn. Well, that was a week or, or That was episode. a week. It was $500 a week. I still worked at school safety. So we only shot one day a week. So we shot mm. on Thursday. So I would do my school safety job. And then if I had to leave, I had the greatest like group leader in the world, Big Sue. She would, I'll punch you out of the head. And we, mm -hmm. I would go to MTV and do the show. We shot everything in one day. And because mm -hmm. we never saw the videos, we lead to them, but we had to sit there and watch them. Right. So it made everything go by faster. So Dre and I used to step behind whatever the wall was with the basketball hoop and change our clothes. We had no dressing room. Man, shit, mm -hmm. MTV didn't believe in us. We have a contract for two years. Two years? Two, two years. And mm -hmm. Leo Cohen. Russ artist Russell managed us and Leo was in charge of us and we weren't getting paid. And Leo, God bless Leo, my nigga. Because Leo mm. walked in there and he had a meeting and me and Dre went with him. And Leo said, sit, sit out right here. I'm gonna go in here and talk. And Leo knew what they was charging per commercial while we was on. And he knew the ratings because they never wanted us to know the ratings. Mm. And Leo knew the ratings. And then Leo came out, I never forget this shit, stone face. And he's like, come on, y'all, let's get on the elevator. So we get on the elevator, and me and Dre is like, I'm thinking to myself, that's it. I got to go back to school safety. Leo wouldn't wow, have what, what fucked the whole deal up. What happened? He waits till we get downstairs in the lobby, and we walk out the door, and Leo said, you two motherfuckers are the luckiest motherfuckers in the world. I got y'all $250,000 a year apiece. Holy shit. <laughs> and what year was this? This was 90... Okay, 89, 90, 90, 92. Damn. 92. 92. My parents collectively had never seen $250,000 in a year. Leo mm. got us that. Guaranteed money, too. Wow. No matter what. Fucking t no matter what. No matter what. Uh, we was guaranteed. And then after they became so big, they had so many people in, under Rush Artist Management. Me and Dre kind of stepped away, and then the Fat Boys old manager, Charlie Stetler, took over who played Beaker and Crush Groove. Mm -hmm. Charlie started managing us, and then we just, I remember sitting with Charlie, and Charlie was like, well, at 250, New York got Charlie's good. If I can't make you a million dollars in a year, you, I'm not gonna manage you. I guarantee I'll make you both a million dollars each this year. <coughs> and he fucking did. He did. Mm. He did. We went from 250 to five, from five to seven. He was making money. He was making money, bro. This was all while you was at your own TV raps or was it <laughs> this other was TV raps. Well, in 93, I got or Hot 97. Right, right. So right. collectively, I was oof, killing it. Killing it was it, like man. a rapper. Yeah. <laughs> and then who's make the rap man? money. Right? <laughs> <laughs> then who's the man? I wrote who's the man. I, I wrote heard. the story. Yeah, I wrote I the that. story. I heard that. And then I went to Dre and said, what do you think about this, that, and the third? And Dre was like, I like it. And then Dre helped me expound on it. And then we, then Charlie took it to New Line, and then New Line was like, "Yeah, let's do the movie." But that's all because Kid and Play were successful before us. Right. New Line mm -hmm. Cinemas. Yeah, mm -hmm. I give all the props to Kid and Play. Kid, well, backtrack. I heard Jeff tell the story, Jazzy Jeff, that that was supposed to be for Jeff and Will, yeah. and they turned it down. House Party, wow. <laughs> and then yeah. Kid and Play took it. Right. And because right. they were successful, they opened the door for all of us to do movies. Mm -hmm. So I'm not going to sit here and act like we did something incredible when Kid and Play were absolutely kicked that fucking door open for us to do this. Oh, they don't get they don't get enough. Uh, nah, they, all the shit they, that they, they did, know. clothing lines, yeah. cartoons, Play had, comic uh, books, foreplay. 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 Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. 
the cartoon. They had a car. They had a Saturday morning cartoon. Yeah, they had cartoon. a cartoon. They had a comic book. They had Only a other people I know that had a cartoon when I was a kid was the Jackson Five. They MC, had a cartoon. MC Hammer yeah. had one after. They were, Hammer had. They were like. It was like Scooby Doo before yeah, Scooby Doo. Yeah. yeah. Hammer had a joint. Yeah. And Kid and Play. They had lunch boxes, thermos. Come on, man. Yeah. There's a household name. And here's an ill thing about Kid and Play. I was friends with Kid before you on TV raps when I was a high school security guard. I'm in the video for Rolling with Kid and Play. <laughs> I'm in, I'm, I play one of the dudes in the lunchroom. The go go fight. <laughs> yeah, I'm in the video. I, got, I secured, see, I, I secured the building for them to shoot that video with. Oh, Ted directed the video. On oh, school safety. Yes, on oh, school, school safety. safety. Ted directed the video. Rolling Ted directed push. Ted directed get up. I was at all of them shits. I was mm. at all before you on TV Raps because I was friends with Ted. I mm. was, what you doing? I, I'm getting ready to do a video for Salt and Pepper. I love Salt and Pepper. Which mm. one are you doing? Push it. All right, I'm pulling up. We come mm. to see it. We come to see it. Um, in that, wait till you get to the part of the lunch. Why are you bro. Bobby? Yeah. You gonna see me for like that, that much, just like that. That was before you on TV rap. Right? That was an Andrew Jackson High School in Queens. So did you? Mm. Was the goal to rap, or was the goal to just exist in hip hop? My goal, originally. my original goal, was actually rap, but I was a trumpet player. Hold on, was that you? Yeah, that's me right there. See, there you go. Told you. Yeah, well, I was a trumpet player too, so I was torn between funk, music, and my band in hip hop. The band was called Oasis Two, and then later on the Function Freaks, and then later on No Face. Mm. No Face Records on RAL Def Jam. No Face. Bitches with problems. BWP. You was in that that video. That's my group. Right. That's me rapping on the record. Right, 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 right. Yeah, that's my group. No Face is the thing that caught me. Yeah, that, that sounded familiar. Yeah, because we had a record label. Uh, Jay had JMJ records. We had No Face records. And then MTV caught, well, we had an album called Wake Your Door Up. The first single was a parody of We Want the Funk by mm-hmm. Parliament. It was mm-hmm. We Want the Funk. Da, 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 wake your daughter <laughs> up. We, yeah. Yeah. We, the, we fancied ourselves the East Coast Two Live Crew. No yeah. Face just yeah, came was wild. the fuck. Probably to get a dick suck. And the album cover was all three of us coming through a bedroom window <laughs> of a young lady. Yo, that is wild. And the album cover said, Yo. no face, wake it's wild, inappropriate. Up. That's bruh, what it is. Wake it <laughs> up, bro. And the MTV screen. got wind of it mm-hmm. and said, you either do this or you do that. So I backed out of the group because I had the power to play the videos that was on our label. Right. Our first BWP video was directed by Hype Williams. That was his first video. And I had to sign off on it. What? It was a third, a third, a third. Yeah. And then Jenny McCarthy comes along later on. She poses naked in Playboy, and that's okay. But I can't do fake hair wearing, bitch. I can't do <laughs> wake your daughter up. We want to fuck. I can't do none of that. I had to bow out because it was for the betterment of the group. Group. Right. Mm. Yeah. BWP, now, bitches with problems. Yeah. Now, when I was young, I was confused. No, that's the name of the group. That's the name of the group. No, you no, got no, it from BWA. Niggas with attitude, bitches with problems. Problem. Yeah, that's the name no, of the group. I, I was confused. Because I was like, uh, Dr. Dre's on the radio, but then he then he got he got he, N.W.A. Like how does how does it work? Dre was yeah. I used to get confused. Yeah, like, Dre. How, how did how did two guys from two different coasts end up with the same name? <laughs> he's Andre Young. Right. He's Andre Brown. My Dr. Dre is Andre. Right. But when he was a kid, he was a ball boy for the Nets, and he idolized Dr. J. So when he got into hip hop, he took the doctor, yeah. Andre shortened it, Dr. Dre. Dre. Dr. Dre from the West Coast had no idea about Dr. Dre from the East Coast and vice versa. Mm. So it ended up being two they Dr. They probably Dre. did the same thing. And they became yeah. cool and with Dr. each other. Dr. J. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah. 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 And and became, I used to be confused. Like. Yeah, it became cool with each other. It's like um, when I became Ed Lover and professionally known as Ed Lover, and I was on the radio in New York on Hot 97, I got win of a cat in Atlanta going by the name of Chris Lover Lover. So I was like, there's only going to be one lover on the radio in the United States. Fuck that. I'm sending this cat a cease and desist. And something told me, don't do it. He's in Atlanta. He's not in New York. I'm in New York. It ain't going to make a difference. And I didn't. And that's ludicrous. I'm so glad I didn't do that. (laughs) (laughs) They're going to hate me right now if I did that shit. And me and Luda cool. Right. 
You yeah. know, Shaka, big up Shaka, we yeah. cool. Shout out to Shaka. Yeah, shout out to Shaka, oh, yeah, man. Yeah. Love you, bro. You know what I mean? Love you, man. Oh, yeah. And that was, you know, that was Luda. Chris Love Alone. Love yeah. Wait, so, so, Ed, you said what your wildest interview was. You said what your favorite interview was. What's the worst? Some, that, some, some French worst? group they forced on us. They was, I don't remember the it's name of them whack group. ass niggas. Yeah, I can't even remember their name. They were terrible. And they forced us to play their video. And it was like, <laughs> I don't even remember. They were some French dudes. They could hardly spoke English. Me Two and Dre, dark skin guys? Uh, me and Dre just straight curved them the whole interview, man. Oh, yeah. It was just yeah. like short answers just to get rid of them. I think it came from up top. And it was like, that's when they started getting too involved in what we were doing. Mm. They took the power away from us to play whatever we wanted to play. It went to Miss Sherry Howell over there. She was programming our shit. It was like, okay, now y'all got to interview these guys. But this is after you're being paid all this money. Yeah, it was that we was hot. Right. We was on six days a week. Yeah. We had a countdown show. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then I think Saturday they played us twice. You became the tastemakers. Yeah, it was Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and twice on Saturday. So where, where do you think Somebody who's experienced it, where do you think this corporate need comes from to put their hands in something that's already working to the point where they fuck it up? Money. They got to get the money. You can't get the money. Yeah. They got to get the money, bro. You're not, when it's it's on a corporate platform, corporate is going to always know that they're going to get the money. We started realizing that there was money. We did this shit for love. We didn't do it for money. I was never in this for money. Right. Mm-hmm. I was in it for the love. I just wanted to be involved. Mm-hmm. Like, this is the music that I grew up on. Like, this, these people are the people that I idolize. Like, mm-hmm. uh, Russell Simmons is from my neighborhood, not too far. Chad Master J was four blocks away from Hollis. where I grew up in. Nah, you, you right? Queens guys was cheating. Yeah. You had you too know, many LL rappers from just in the hood. Like, like, <laughs> Tribe Called Quest is from Linden. <laughs> like right there. Yeah, you, you had to almost so get pepper. shot to go see Jay Z. Eric B is Biggie. from. <laughs> yeah, right. Eric <laughs> B is from like over there in. Well, he claims Long Island. Of, well, Flushing too. But remember, he used to be he used to be Molly Mall's roommate. Right, right, true. Right, you know, right, right, so right, right. we was you grew up around Sweet Tea was from right there. Mm-hmm. Joski Love used to come around all the time. Kwame. Kwame is from right there. So you got a taste of an underdog borough blowing up at the same time. So once it became about money, once they saw how money could be made off hip hop, it changed the whole culture. Because if you look at them old Yo TV Rats video, hardly ever did do sneakers match whatever outfit they had on. Yeah. They yeah. wore what the fuck they had. They lost soul, that's how they dressed. Right. That's what they wore. They didn't do wardrobe budgets and all that shit. We couldn't afford Dapper Dan. Drug dealers wore Dapper Dan. Yeah. Oh, we couldn't afford that shit. Nah. Couldn't afford that. I wanted a Suzuki sidekick so bad I didn't know what I would do. <laughs> that shit was the car when I was coming up. <laughs> Suzuki sidekick. Yeah. Master Ace made a whole culture around him. Yeah. Jeeps. That, the Jeeps was crazy. The Wranglers, and you take it to Dap and he Louis Vuitton the shit out of it. That was the shit. You know, you saw we saw Fat Cat and the Corley brothers and the Furtado brothers and the Prime team. Mm-hmm. They drank. Fucking that, split that some more wet at the club. We drink eight dollar Alabama slammers or whatever you had. <laughs> so we were just about the culture, man. We weren't about the money. Then when, when money came, it was different. Wouldn't it be smarter to leave the cats who are making the money the fuck alone, as opposed to meddling and putting your hands in and insisting that this French group comes and you got to interview them? Like, wouldn't they just leave y'all? It just seems nah. it, it seems smarter. Am I bugging? Or nah, somebody, no, it somebody does seem smart. But it ain't smart to put the power in the hands of black kids. Yeah. Even if they're the ones making the money. They don't you cut off your nose to spite your face. Absolutely. Wow. Okay. Well. Absolutely. Make the money because I'm going to make more money, three or four times as much money as I'm paying you. You think that still stands to this day? Absolutely. Absolutely. Corporate America makes way more money off hip hop than the artists do. Mm-hmm. And the artists now make a lot of money. money. God bless them. Right. God bless them. A small percentage. But it's still a small percentage of what the corporate, what corporate America makes. It's still just a tiny percentage of what they make off of them. No matter what they right. give them, they're always going to make five to ten times more money than you. And the same thing with sports. Mm-hmm. If you could pay LeBron that, what are you making? Facts. Right. Yeah. Facts. What, what is he generating? Yeah. If you get somebody, you get Zion Williamson a two hundred million dollar contract, and he hardly plays. What are you making off of just his name alone? 
Right, because they make the money off the jersey sales. They make the money off of all of that, the concessions, tickets, all of that, tickets, high. all of that. Yeah, right. right. Small ass shots they be giving at the arenas. Absolutely, <laughs> thirty dollars. Thirty dollars like, should be nothing. <laughs> and they water that shit down. Be a sniff. Matter of fact, speaking of shots, let me know. Speaking of shots, we keep talking. Just the five minute break. Now again, rewinding back. Um. Yeah, you 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 protect them Pac from himself. But when he came to New York, and um, you know, heard so many stories from across the room in here on how Biggie and Pac was close, they was cool, they was friends, they was that. How did all of that go wrong, in your opinion? Quad, the quad shooting, it changed everything. <clears throat> It changed their, the scope of their friendship. It just, it, it changed everything. And then Pac was going through his shit with the sexual assault case. It, it just changed everything. Because I met Pac when I went to do my little blinking, if you miss me, part in Juice. That's when I met Tupac. And I had Stretch with me. I had never been like a big weed smoker, but him and Stretch hit it off brilliantly. Right. And they became friends. And everybody knew Big, and Big was on the come up. Pac wasn't really that big yet. Like, Juice came out in 93, right? Mm. Pac wasn't really that big. He already had an album out. He had already did the digital underground shit, but he wasn't the huge star that he became. Right. So everybody that was on the come up at the same time became friends. The quad shit shifted everything. It fucked everything up. We lost two good niggas because of some bullshit. Straight you, bullshit. You feel like... It was bullshit. Everybody knows. But when you say we lost two... Big and Pop. You feel like that was connected to- The East to Coast, West Coast War? Yeah. Yeah. It kicked off over- It kicked off. And it really wasn't that. <laughs> it was really Suge and Puff that, that had a problem. But I heard even they were friends. At first. It yeah. was really Suge. If you, from the journalist- kicked the shit off. Was it, that was it. When Suge stood there, me and Dre hosted that Sauce Awards too. 95. Yeah, yeah, yeah 95. Yeah. When Suge said, if you don't want you all up in the video, all up in there, all up, dancing. come to death row, dancing. Right. That really kind of started it. All right, but Ed, was it like a joke? You know how them, oh, I might. Like, no, 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 that's all no, no. niggas was mad. Niggas want to form on them niggas. But Snoop got out there like, y'all don't love us. We know we in New York. Y'all don't love death row. Snoop never was in that shit. Right. He never, matter of fact, him and Pac had problems because Snoop was on the radio where Angie was like, I do a record with Big. I love Big. I love Pop. Snoop was neutral. Snoop didn't want yeah. to be in that shit, man. Yeah. He said, them boys don't want no problems. They, and he didn't say it in a mean way. He was like, them boys ain't looking for no problems. Either. No. It was a that bunch in. of bullshit, bro. Yeah. That got out of hand. And the media had a lot to do with it. They created the East Coast, West Coast shit to sell magazines. Mm. And it just got out of hand. You know, ain't nobody going to back down. But what, what were the conversations like with Tupac at the time? Fuck them niggas over there. That's what the conversation was like. All right, from your perspective, would you feel res your friend is responsible for your protection on his turf? No. Not when you know where it came from. And I'm not privy to say where it came from, but he knew where it came from. And it had absolutely nothing to do with Big. Nothing. Right. Nothing. From what I understand, when he got upstairs and they took his gun from him, Big hit it in the piano, and then when all the cops came, Big walked back in, got the gun out of the piano, put it in his waist, and walked out amongst all of them cops with an illegal handgun. It just wasn't what it's supposed to be, and it got blown the fuck out. It just got blown, man. But was it blown out because Pac was motivated to, to kind of push that narrative? I don't know what he was motivated by. I can't really speak on it because I don't know. I know that was my dude. I know these both my dudes. Right. I know Pac used to come to my mama's house. I know my mother used to feed the nigga. I know he was with Stretch all the time. I know when he came to New York, Stretch pick him up in the MPV from the airport and he hung around. It's just, I don't know how that shit got blown out of proportion, but I know I wasn't going to be in the middle of this shit. Right. I knew that. I knew I was Sweden, nigga, Switzerland. I'm neutral. I'm not getting involved in that shit. And I saw both of them. I was sitting next to Big when the lights came on in the Peter, Peterson Automotive Museum. Big reached between his legs and gave me a bottle of Dom P and said, drink health this shit and bring it back. 
I'm like, I'm fucking supposed to drink. Give it to some bitches, nigga. I'll go fuck. So I got a Polaroid of all of us. I got a Polaroid picture of all of us together. Mm -hmm. It's me, Big, Puff, Stevie J, Jermaine Dupri, Big Gene, all of us together in the Polaroid. It took several Polaroids. Big was on the cane because he had had a mm -hmm. car accident with yeah, the seeds, right? Yeah. yeah. So he gave me the bottle. I took the bottle. I started pouring it around. The party was lit. New York was in the house. It was fucking crazy. Everybody's yelling, show me the money. Jerry Maguire was out. Ace is DJing. Me and Kenny Burns are on the mic. It's just so New York up in that motherfucker. It was crazy. <laughs> so I bring the bottle back. He looked at it. You drunk half this shit? And he reached between his legs and pulled out a bottle of Grand Maillet and filled it up and gave it back to me. So the, they shut it down. The lights come on. I start walking. He's like, Edwin. I'm like, what's up, Christopher? You going to Nas's party in the hills? I'm like, yeah, you want to ride with us? I said, nah, I'm good. I got a call. Because every time I went to L.A., I, I'm feeling myself. Nigga making some money. I'm getting me a Corvette drop top. It's fucking L.A. Why what? not? Mm -hmm. right. So I'm chilling. I got a call. That's the last time I saw him. So I get the call when I'm at the party. Somebody's blowing me up 911. I ain't have no cell phone. And I call him back. He said, come to Mount Sinai. Big guy shot. That's the last mm -hmm. time I saw him alive. What, did you get to see him in the hospital? No, not at all. Nobody was let in today. Everybody was like out in the uh, emergency area where the trucks come in. Everybody's out there. Everybody's out there. Seize comes out. And he kicks a garbage can. He started yelling. And we knew Big was dead. And she was just like quiet, descended. And the hurtful thing to me was how L.A. reacted to it. When you got up the next day and turned on the radio and they was talking about it, like the poetess was on and she was talking about it, and they were so disrespectful, man. He shouldn't have been as fat ass I in the first place. He knew what it was. It's war. This is how we get down. I was like, wow. But why? Because that's how they felt. They had Pox back. Did you ever run into those people later on? And be like, the people that were calling wrong. in? No, no, not the people that was calling in, but like the, I heard the radio stations was kind of propagating. No, poet. Is, I heard poet. Is. She definitely wasn't. Mm -hmm. She was opening up the line for people to say how they felt, and there was a oh, lot of people. She wasn't saying that people. No, were calling it was the in people that was calling got you, in. Got you, the majority got you. of the people. Mm -hmm. She was like, "Rest in peace, Big. Big was an incredible artist." The people that was calling in, we opened up the lines. Y'all want to say something? They was being so crazy, oh. mad, disrespectful. Super contrary to where we was at on the radio here when Pac died. Right. When Pac died, everybody felt fucked up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I heard Angie announce it. I was on my way to the Nas concert. There's a video that's floating around of me telling everybody yeah. at the Nas concert yeah. that Nas told me, and I can't say that, you go out there and say it. That Pac had died that night. Yeah. And we felt fucked up. Nobody was like, well, that's what the nigga get. Yeah. Yeah. Nah. Nobody was doing no, that. No, nobody was doing that. And Pac died before Big. Mm -hmm. But but during that time, nobody felt like Biggie or Puff or Bad Boy was responsible for Pac's death. Nobody so, in the East Coast. But they felt that way in the West Coast. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think Big is dead right now because people felt like Big was responsible for Pac. And he definitely wasn't. If you watch the fucking uh, Biggie and Tupac shit that the whole series, I forgot what they did on it. Mm -hmm. it, it you already know. It's you right there. The fight in Vegas. Yeah, it was. that's Vegas. what that was about. That had right. nothing to do with it. But people felt like that because everybody was so <clears throat> up in arms. Like, you know, you scared to go to L.A. My mom's like, get on the first thing, come home, the fuck mm -hmm. out of there because you're scared. We're right. We went back to that hotel and I had Biggie died. Yeah, we were that, scared. I heard the, the stories. I heard the stories. It was death. like, yo, <laughs> people thought Suge was killing everybody. Yeah, we thought this we was next. Crazy. You don't want to go to get nothing to eat. Like everybody's trying to change their flights to go home. Mm. You in LA. Fuck whether or not you're in Beverly Hills, you still in LA. You're on their territory. Mm -hmm. So we scared to death, man. I'm like, I had the fuck out of here. As quick as I can. Hoodie on, pulled tight on my way to the airport. I ain't want nobody to see me. I was scared. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The 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 publications that were uh, promoting the East versus West thing. Being that you had the power, you were on the radio at the time, you were, did you ever speak up Absolutely. against that? From my perspective of being friends with both of them, yeah. I, but nobody was trying to hear it. The mm -hmm. West Coast wasn't trying to hear what the fuck I had to say. They weren't hearing it. I remember those, I remember some of those shows. Yeah, I tried to tell them. You spoke them. out against it a lot. I spoke out against it all the time because it got, it became a snowball. 
it snowballed out of everyone's control. I'm quite sure if everybody could go back and do it differently, that a lot of people that was involved in it would have done it differently. But it just snowballed to the point of no return. It just snowballed and they ran into each other and then they beefing and then this person got this crew with them and this person got that crew with them and ain't nobody backing down because ain't nobody scared. This shit was crazy. The the word was, and I the word was that when Pac was blaming Biggie for the shooting, Big was genuinely hurt. Oh, the destroyed. Idea. This fucking destroyed. Like you know? it really yeah, hurt. You can see the interviews. He did interviews. It's like I don't have no malice or nothing against that man because they were cool. Pac used to always want to go to Brooklyn to fuck mm -hmm. with Big and season them. Mm -hmm. He always wanted to go over there, and Big always wanted to find out where Pac was to fuck with Pac. They fucked with each other. Mm -hmm. They rhymed with each other. They did a lot of shit with each other. You know, um, if you hear Fat Joe tell a story about. When they was on stage at Madison Square Garden, I got seven Mac 11s yeah, about the it. Yeah, he was right there. They came to that show together. Hmm. Hmm. There was no beef between them two niggas. They came to that show together. They were friends, man. Uh -huh. They were friends. I was, I'm older than them niggas, so I was always a voice of reasoning. You know what I mean? Like, yo, come on, man. What y'all niggas doing, man? Chill out. Pop, still fuck with that person over there. You know what I mean? Because uh -huh. I know these niggas. So... Lee being a voice of reasoning, it hurt. It hurt big to his core. It did. To hear that he was being blamed. Yeah, it, it hurt him. It hurt him bad. It hurt him bad. What do you think the science was behind that? Yes, Knowing sir. that Pac knew he wasn't. I don't know, bro. Because he stopped fucking with Stretch before Stretch died. And he was Stretch's daughter, Manisha's godfather. And I'm the other godfather. Oh, he wow. stopped fucking with Stretch because he felt like he wanted Stretch to take sides. And Stretch was like, nah, I'll fuck with you. I'll fuck with Big. I'm not taking no sides. Even though I produce records for you, I'm not, I'm not getting involved with that shit, yo. Come on. What are we doing here? Right. It, was, it was just a ridiculously mixed up time, man, in hip hop. And it's a fucking shame, man. It hurts me. Because I often think of like, what would hip hop be like if both of them niggas had lived? Something it's different. A lot yeah. of rappers would totally be Totally different. Something different. Something yeah, a lot of niggas wouldn't have made it, bro. Ew. Something different. Big was so good. He was. Yeah. He was so good, and it, he was so lyrical, and right? It's, it's, and it's, Pac just had a way of capturing your heart and making niggas yeah. feel it, your soul, and mm -hmm. getting you into into your feelings. And the nigga was an amazing actor. Mm -hmm. So if he'd have lived, he'd have probably been bigger than Will Smith or Latifah or any of the rest of them. He was that fucking good. He's an amazing cat, yo. The landscape would have been different had we, you think, Big Pop, Pun, Big L, Jam Master J. Yeah. Those five still around. The landscape of hip hop looks even, completely even different. Even Aaliyah and R&B. Oh, the yeah. Left Eye mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. R&B, the landscape would have been totally different. But I'm thinking about your relationship with Run DMC. Yeah, Jay. Mm -hmm. That hurt. That hurt. That still hurts. Jay was the glue. Jay was the street part of them. Jay gave them their fashion. He gave them the Hollins crew. Running them, we didn't know running them. We knew Jay. Everybody from Hollins, all the niggas that was around them, they knew Jay. They didn't, they didn't fuck with running them. Because when they first came, they didn't have a DJ. Then they got Jay, and Jay gave them the belt buckles, the, the hats, Adidas, the, the hats with no laces, the big Adidas. That was Jay. Jay gave him the swag. Definitely. D tell you, D didn't tell you Jay and Jay gave him the swag. Like yeah. for real. They got like old video of running them performing at the fever with plaid two jackets on. <laughs> Jay gave them niggas the swag. Them niggas wasn't even like really considered the best rappers in our neighborhood. Who the, was? Run DMC. But who was considered the best? L from Time Me or in the park. I got slate <laughs> niggas in the park. My man Sha. There was other niggas until L, you know, L was a, a, like 13 and he wasn't even really on the scene. But Ron, we knew who Ron, it was Russell Brother, but niggas wasn't like Ron. Them niggas just made great fucking records and then took them off. Yeah, took the fuck off. Thank God, because they definitely put us on the map, though. Yeah. They how put funny queens on the map. They, 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 they put hip-hop on the map. And they put me on fucking TV. MTV. Mm. 
MT, the first hip hop video shown on MTV was then with. But um, the pilot video on TV Raps was hosted by Ron and D. Right. So if that shit didn't take off, there would have been no need for Fab and then absolutely no need for me. Oh, okay. I got it. Yeah. I got it. Yeah, so shit. I owe it all to them. The Kings of Rock. What was the song with uh, Aerosmith? Walk, Walk this, this way. way. Thank you. Walk this way. I got caught. They had did rock and hip hop before that. Cause hmm? they had they had um, rock box, and then they had King of Rock. Mm -hmm. But the King of Rock, yeah, yeah. Uh, is no higher. And then mm -hmm. just the walk this way that really they Blew saved Aerosmith's career. They was dead. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they were they were dead. Ask them; they'll tell you. Yeah, mm -hmm. they were dead before they did walk this, this way. way. Mm -hmm. Different. Now you, it, we're celebrating the 50, 50th anniversary of hip hop this year. Um. You being around for the greater portion of it, who would you say was dominating decade to decade? The eighties, from the eighties to the nineties. Well, shit, run in early eighties run. Al, Al was the first real sex symbol that we had in hip hop. Early late seventies, early eighties. Curtis Blow was the man. Melly Mel is still. I just saw him the other day. He's still a god to me. Yeah, Mel is crazy. God to me, Mel is crazy, yeah, man. I love, I love that guy. Yo, shout he's out to Mel. He's crazy, me, bro. He's one of the earliest, like, real rap dudes. Like, that was just really yeah. writing rhymes. Like, yeah. the message opened the door for every reality rap record and hardcore mm -hmm. rap and gangster rap. The message let niggas know you can talk about where you mm -hmm. come from, right? So, right. Mel, Modi, of course. KRS One was a fucking monster, bro. I remember talking to Run. KRS One took jabs at Run DMC. Hmm. Of course oh, he absolutely. Did. Of course he did. Of course he did. Of course he Where? did. What? Kings lose crowns, but teachers stay intelligent. Yeah. Uh, talking silly rounds on the mic is is quite irre irre irrelevant. irrelevant, especially when you're not college material. That was Run DMC. So I asked Run, why didn't you never answer? Run said I was doing stadiums. He was doing clubs. Why would I bring him up on my left? <laughs> right. He said, I'm doing stadiums. He's doing clubs. Right. And then he said, Ed, and another note, and nigga was nice like that. We didn't want to fuck with him. Yeah. <laughs> he was nice. Cray Rest, rock him. Come on, God. Yeah. Slick Rick don't get enough props. Amazing. Um, that Looks great event of Slick Rick has got to be one of the greatest to, albums. To this day, I feel like Slick, Slick would be the one who, throughout all these years, could still jump on the track, it, don't, it wouldn't matter who it was. Right. That's just Slick Rick. And it's well, just and, but he way. influenced so many damn people, right? Mm -hmm. Because right. every time you hear, like the if you story. listen to Big, give me the loop, give me the loop, yeah. story. the two different voices, yeah. that's all Slick Rick. Right. All of that. Snoop doing Lottie Dottie. For, for over those of you that didn't know, DMX both those voices was Biggie. DMX. Damien, doing, the da yeah, the Damien. The Damien, yeah, the two right. different voices. Mm, right. We've been eating long enough now, stop being greedy. Uh -huh. And then switch voice, that's because of Slick Rick did that shit. Mm -hmm. Right. Rick was Rick was Rick was amazing, but his flow was effortless. Absolutely, and then Rock Kim was the guard MC. Yeah. Kane was a fucking monster. There's just so many dog. And then when you talk about the '90s, of course, you got to talk about those cats gave birth to Big and Jay, Jay, Jay Nas, Snoop, Nas, Snoop, Nas, Snoop <laughs> Common, Cube, Wu Tang, Wu Tang. Oh. Please, I don't want to get started. Yeah, absolutely. That's the greatest rap group of all time, in my opinion. My man. See? My man. I didn't. I'm, 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 I'm proud that. I'm proud that. I'm sitting here, here. I'm sitting here right, on this so. show, and I argue with my man Michael Blue Williams all the time right. because he managed Outcast, Outcast when they won the fucking album of the year, whatever they wanted, the Grammys, mm -hmm. and they sold 10 million. Right. And I said, Blue, I don't give a fuck what you say. <laughs> the greatest rap group of all Wu -Tang. time is Wu-Tang. Wu -Tang. You know why? Wu because collectively they did their shit, but look at what they did individually mm -hmm. with nine, 10 motherfuckers coming out of one rap yeah, group. Right. Let me tell you my Wu-Tang story. Jones Beach used to have a Greek fest. Yep. Right. So I'm at the Greek fest one uh -huh. year. This is, when did, uh, this has gotta be 92. I'm at the Greek fest, I'm chilling. Got a couple of my homies when we be rolling. I get surrounded by these niggas. The Wu-Tang. Ed Lover, what's good? <laughs> the Wu-Tang. Yeah, what's good? We the Wu-Tang clan. I was like, what? <laughs> 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 Y'all didn't what? So I recognize RZA. 
Right. Because he was Prince Raheem. Raheem, right. And we used to play his video. We love you, Raheem. Raheem, I said, I know you. Yeah. You're Prince Raheem. Them niggas shut me down. The (laughs) Rizza. Fuck that Raheem shit. (laughs) The Rizza. And I recognized a genius because he was a Jizza on Geffen. Right. And I said, I know you too. Come you do the, me. Yeah, come do you the, the genius nigga. The yeah. Jizza. <laughs> you see, yo, take our shit on Wu Tang Records. Right. Method Man on one side, protect your neck on the Another other side. side. Mm. I Passive. said, Bet, I listened to this shit. I had the ill white BBSs on it, ill white fucking Toyota joint. Skirt <laughs> set on the back, pull the speaker out, pull the radio out. Speakers in the back, I get in this shit, the shit changed my life. I was like, how do they make eight niggas sound like one nigga? <laughs> like this. Yeah. Then I turn over, I'm like, who the fuck is an M-E-T-H-O-D man? man. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I was like, yo, this shit is incredible. Yeah. And I was I was hooked. And I don't give a fuck. Anybody watch this shit, you want to argue with me? Leave a comment, nigga. The Wu Tang is the greatest. <laughs> you heard? Leave it in the comments. That ever lived, in my opinion, because of what they were able to do. What they did was take what Herbie did to the next level. Herbie had Salt and Pepper, Kwame, Kid and Play, mm-hmm. Dana Dane, mm-hmm. all of them. Right, Sweet Tea signed under his label, but under his production company, mm-hmm. and then got them all individual deals, but they weren't one group. True. Ain't nobody in history do that. RZA had Listen, everybody nobody. signed, right? And then Loud had a first right to refusal on everybody. Mm-hmm. So if Loud didn't want them, they was able to go other, other places, places and get other deals for them. Right. Right? Well, Loud, you know, if you saw the Wu Tang in American Saga, which is incredible, yeah, you should yeah. see that. You'll see that RZA told Steve, you can have Wu Tang, because lit- in them days, if you sign, right? When No Face signed the Def Jam, mm-hmm. It was no face for seven albums. And then if Ed Lover wants to do his own thing, Ed still signed to Def Jam. Mark Sex is signed to Def Jam. Shy signed to Def Jam. Rizzo didn't sign that kind of deal. And that was unfucking Fucking precedent. Mm-hmm. Never heard of it. Right? Mm-hmm. Them niggas did work, bro. Yeah. They yeah. all dope on their own. And then they all dope together. Who's your favorite? Ghost. Supreme Clientele. I am I, am, I, feel like I feel like that was the last Wu Tang album. I feel like that was the last Wu Tang album. I'm Supreme Clientele. I'm, I'm, I'm with, I'm with I feel Supreme like that was the last one. It was the other one album. after Supreme Clientele. But, um, Ghost put out. Bulletproof Wallace? Bulletproof Wallace. Bulletproof Wallace. Bulletproof Wallace. Yes, Come on, son. Ain't nothing fucking with Iron Man. I'm sorry, man. Yes, it is. Is that Sonny listening? That, well, I mean, with that um, with the with the skip from the um, Sunny Carson no and all that. No smoke in the wild. Yeah, I'll put trademarks all over I'll your fucking mouth. I'll put trademarks. Yeah, but Supreme oh, Clientele is hell, bro. Yeah. Oh, yeah. See, Supreme Clientele is hell, but Iron Man. And Bulletproof oh, man. Wallets. That was fire. Bulletproof Wallets was crazy. What was that Supreme Clientele the joint he did with the Rizzo girl? Cause of you, I'm hurting. Within my, within my heart. That's my <laughs> shit, son. I had a girl named Rhonda from way up yonder. Hey, yo, yo God, don't no fuck, fuck with her. Oh, that's just, come on, man. That shit ain't no love to be found. <laughs> <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Come on, man. Come on, man. I got to ask, um, are you aware of the thing BT's doing? With oh, the, with the greatest groups of all time? Yeah, I heard about it. Yeah, you know the last two finalists? It's Wu-Tang and who? Death Row. We'll tell you it's better than Death Row. Death Row wasn't a group. There's a crew. There's crew. A crew. Yeah, but that's what it is. Greatest, greatest rapper. But they weren't a group. The, yeah. We got shit off of Capadonna. Capadonna on Iron Man. What the fuck off on Iron Man? Right? Let us milk this cow. Winter War. Yeah. Winter War. Winter War. That's we know how. <laughs> Park Hill Shell. They the greatest Blah. group. They, I don't count them. I don't. That's not a crew to me. That's a group. That's a group. If you took them as a crew, you'd have to include Shaheem, you have to include Sons of Man, you'd right. have to include Killer the Killer Whoop, the Killer Whoop. No, it's a group. Return it's, to the 36th It's greatest rap crew. Old Dirty? Listen. You're, 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 you're preaching to the quiet. I've been telling people vote Wu Tang for weeks. Vote Wu Tang. Vote Wu Tang. You know, you know, all them, Dre is a, a, a fucking master of production, taking nothing away from Dre. Right. Snoop Dogg's album, Doggy Style. An amazing album. Classic. What's the name of them? Get at you. Who? These nuts. That whole album. <laughs> yeah. Fucking crazy. Right. 
But come on, son. Wu Tang Clan ain't nothing to fuck with, son. Wu Tang Clan. You know how long it's shame on the nigga that tried to run a game on the nigga. Before I realized that that song didn't have a hook. Can't fuck with that. It was only one verse. What? Yeah. ODB. Brooklyn Zoo. Brooklyn Zoo was one verse. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. It was one verse. Look at that. If I listen to it, it's only one verse. Yeah. It's one verse. The hook goes once, and then that's it. It's literally one verse long. There is no, there is no, it's not two verses, the, the bridge, it's no bridge. Probably because you couldn't get ODB to sit around and do one. <laughs> <laughs> that nigga was the illest nigga I ever interviewed on the radio. Ever. The nigga came up in the morning when I was on Hot 97. Eddie Griffin was before him. Eddie Griffin walks in from hanging out all night with a tall can of Old English mm-hmm. at 7 o'clock in the morning. Right. Him and Old Dirty drink in the hallway. Old Dirty comes in. We used to always talk over beds. So we're playing the bed. Old Dirty puts the, the headphones on. And I'm trying to interview him. Yo, we got Old Dirty Bassin in the building, Hot 97, New York's number one for hip hop. Return to the 36 Chambers. Yo, you got a food stamp card on the front of that. Old Dirty, what's up? <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck? I wanna say what the fuck. And he said starts rhyming. He's not yeah. listening to nothing yeah, that me or Dre or Lisa, no questions were <laughs> answered. He rhymed the whole time. Drop the headphones and walk the fuck out. <laughs> that was <That's> it. Crazy. <laughs> Same thing he did on your TV Raps. You ever seen the Young TV Raps version with Old Dirty? No. When I asked him, Old Dirty, well, you was late, bro. What was you? You was out in the studio last night? Nah, I was out getting fucked up. That's what he said. Yeah. Old Dirty was hell, man. Yeah. You can't, you can't make that shit up. There's never been a number. You can't. Yeah. But I'm New York. So although uh, I love the funk that Dre and Def Row and them got, but it ain't, they don't have no shame on the nigga that tried to run a game. Who buck wild with the trigger? Wow, wow, with the trigger. trigger. I'll fuck your you ass, ass up. up. <laughs> <laughs> he ain't got no hut one, hut two, hut three. Hey, what? A whole dirty, dirty bass and live and uncut. uncut. Styles of breakable, shadow to, to the young youth. You, you want to get gun? Shoot. Bow. How you like me now? Don't fuck the style. Ruthless wow. Do you want to get your teeth knocked the fuck out? You feel like you own it like that in this shout. Huh. Your razor. Your Come razor. on, man. With the the Come on, man. Even the skits. I'll fucking... Oh fuck, fuck it. it. Come on, come on, man. Man. That's so New York, New York, my you know, nigga. Man. That's so it, it right. embodies who we are. Right. Their own lingo, their own language, their own style. Niggas are saying cream right now because they right. say Hit cream. It. Now, I, I like that you just you just talked about an identity in New York. We're gonna take a five minute break. And you just about to give us a I was about to give you a story about what the real 50 Cent. The original 50 Cent. Now, 50 Cent, that's from Queens, right. was a young dude, but his mom's was in the street. But we used to call him Boo Boo. But everybody knew that Fifth was nice with his hands, even as a young dude. Like, you didn't want to knuckle up with him. You didn't knock old niggas the fuck out. Right. So everybody mm-hmm. knew Fifth was nice. But the real 50 Cent used to run with Eric B and Rock Kim. Yeah. Right. And I was cool with Eric B and Rakim. I had went to the Ave in Queens and bought me the Gucci Link chain. My shit was like this big, each Gucci Link. So I run into Eric B and Rakim in them one day, and I see 50. And 50 go, yo, what's good? I'm like, what's good, 50? He said, you know I was going to get you for that chain. I was like, you was going to rob me? <laughs> He's like, yeah, but, you know, I told Rob I was going to get you. And Rob's like, nah, that's Ed Lovell from your own TV Raps. Let the nigga live. I was like... You was gonna rob me? Like, what did you think was gonna happen? And I was gonna pull the hammers out on you and I was gonna get you for that shit. But everybody and Rock Kim said, every time I see Rock Kim, we laugh about it. Because yeah. 50 was actually gonna rob me. Yeah. Everybody, <laughs> Rock Kim <laughs> saved my shit. The nigga wasn't that big. Right. I'm like, you think I was just gonna let you have my chain like that? Nah, I was gonna pull the joints out on you. Like, go ahead. Give me the fucking off, 50, because you're just a little crazy nigga. You know how everybody know little crazy niggas? He yeah. was like a little crazy nigga. Right. He robbed anybody. Like, Rob told me to leave you the fuck alone. It's like, yo, you nigga. <laughs> Damn, being that he used to be around uh, Rock Kim and, and Eric B, did they ever get like blowback from the shit that he was doing to rappers? No, I don't think at that time. Because remember, yeah, Supreme Magnet. Yeah, Scott, Sonny was with him. 50 was with him. Rob was like, like a real, like you didn't fuck around with Rock Kim. You just, Rock Kim had real niggas with him. Yeah. 
like I remember Supreme Magnetic, we had to go get uh, Leo to save Dre's life because Dre got on a bus. We was all down in New Orleans for uh, BRE, Black Radio Exclusive. Dre got on a bus, sat in the seat. Quano, that was in the uh, microphone feed video, that's Supreme Magnetic's son. Quano told Dre, you can't sit here. My father's getting on the bus and Dre popped off. Mm. And Preem got on the bus. Mm. And Dre kept popping shit. And I said, Dre, shut the fuck up. Nigga, that's Supreme from Brooklyn. Shut the fuck up. And he kept popping. And, and Supreme was like, nigga, when you get home, you're dead. You're fucking dead. And I was like, Preem. And I had to get Leo. We had to go to Eric B's room and talk Supreme off the fucking ledge. Like, this is the niggas you didn't fuck with. Rakim really had niggas. You didn't fuck with it. So did, so did um, Kane. I was about to say, because they, yeah. they exchanged words. Those niggas surrounded me. You know who saved me? Ice-T and the Booyah tribe. So I'm doing a whole week of shows on Big Daddy Kane. Right. We get to the Friday show. I'm joking around. I'm suing Big Daddy Kane. Everything Big Daddy Kane wrote was my rhymes. <laughs> I wrote all the Big Daddy Kane stuff. They took offense to it, but I was joking. That's what mm -hmm. me and Dre did. So I go to Queen Latifah's birthday party and they surround me, like talking about fucking me up and shit. And the Booyah tribe and Ice-T came and got me. So when they came and got me and took me to the car, they put me in Ice-T's car. Mm -hmm. And Ice-T, so I went back to my hood in Queens and got my niggas and like, you know, we're going to Brooklyn. We're going to fuck Kane and his niggas up. But Kane wasn't behind it. So what mm -hmm. Leo did was brought Kane to the station and we squashed all the beef. Mm -hmm. But the niggas formed on me, and I was not very happy about it. Right. Not at all. You were saved by the booyah. The song. booyah. You know how big them niggas was? Dog, I they Samoan. Yeah. <laughs> Man, these yeah. niggas are I thought they look like wrestlers. Yeah, these yeah. niggas are like 6'6 six, six and better. They saved my as, fucking as life. As the tiny ones. Six, yeah, them niggas going to beat the blood out of me that night. For real, they was. They were to beat me into a pulp. The <laughs> booyah tribe and Ice-T plucked me out of there and got me out of there safely. Mm -hmm. Shout out to yeah. King and Ice. Yeah, for real. Shout out to the Booyah tribe. Yeah, came my man. Holy we red. We were talking about things that, you know, that's so clean, that's so Brooklyn. It's, when do you think, in your opinion, when New York lost the identity that they did? When we started trying to be like other cities. Mm -hmm. And I think it's after, like, like when Mano came home, I fucking love Mano to death. Like, yeah, shout I put Mano on the radio as soon as he came home. After Mano made High Hater and shit like that, and then he did the record with T-Pain, I, and I think like somewhere along the way, New York lost its identity because everybody else, everybody had their time, and New York didn't know how to handle it when they didn't have their time no more. And then we became other people. Like when Designer did Panda, it sounded like a down south record. It sounded like Future. Right. Yeah. And I think we lost our identity somewhere within that time period of being what we are. When that became highlighted. Yeah. And it was like, oh, you get a deal from yeah. New York South. Then we wasn't breaking records no more. Radio changed, right? Mm. Um, we stopped breaking records. We used to break records. Like, we used to break records. Like, okay, this is a New York record. This is dope. Everybody started to get a little older. Everybody became old school to the next generation that was coming up. And we stopped breaking New York artists. We just wow. thought, I don't know. We started playing what was popular. But everybody else around the country have always been cities that embraced their artists from that city. And we stopped embracing the artists somewhere down the line. I don't know why. I don't know how that should happen. But we just stopped embracing our artists at some point. Do you think it, it might have had It was way after, like, way after Cam and them. It was way after Dipset. Dipset was a fucking movement. Right. It was way after G-Unit. It was way after Murder, Inc. It was after that. I don't know when the fuck this shit happened that we stopped making New York records, but we just, it just stopped. Hmm. I don't know why. Everybody wanted to sound like everybody else. You know, that's what we're selling. Yeah. To the other parts of the country. Yeah, that too. Outside of New York. That too. And I think Biggie, when he, I think Biggie helped, unfortunately. How? Because when he, when he pointed out in the, in the going back to Cali record, He's, he basically said, you want to go gold in New York or do you want to go platinum selling in Cali? Selling they also say, if I got to choose the coast, I got to choose, choose the, the east. east. 
Right. Live out there. Yeah, yeah. Don't go there. But that don't mean they can get rest in the West. Yes. But when he was talking money, Right. He talked about selling Almost go to Jesus show gate. Or do you want to see about and seven, seven digits, digits? Fuck all the squares in Cali. Great, great place, place to visit. So it became it became a thing to sell records someplace else. But you should always sell records, records when you're on the court. Right. You shouldn't sell records trying he, to sound, like, said sound like No, 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 no. Else. Yeah, but the labels who were signing these artists were signing artists who were selling in other places. So they sounded like other artists. So in other words, if I... If but New I, York blew their own shit yeah, out. They had nothing to do with that. You know no, what no, I said? Master, I said, I said that when I opened the door. New York stopped supporting it. New York. The niggas that was on top stopped reaching back to who was coming next. Why Nicki Minaj had to go south to yeah, get the sign? Same reason 50 had right. to leave. Right. Why did 50... Why did M and Dre sign 50? Why 50 wasn't co-signed by somebody from New York? Well, track uh, messages. Yeah, yeah. Message, yeah. They tried. Well, Jay yeah. tried. Yeah, Jay tried. Right. And then Track tried. Mm-hmm. And then when he got hit up, no, no labels wanted nobody to wanted to fuck with him, talk. right? They tried to right. black bone, right? Right. And then Eminem got him. Mm-hmm. But somebody from New York should have been that co-signer on Fifth. Somebody should have been in New York. Fendi had run Nicki fucking Minaj around New York for years. Mm-hmm. And nobody would fuck with her. Mm-hmm. Deb Anthony was already down south. Shout and out to she, Deb. Shout out to Deb. And Bimmy and the brother Joe, they're all Queens people. And they, it took Gucci and them to put her on. Why? Because we got, well, we got too much money. We forgot that we did grab the next nigga that was coming. I think it was because it was a whole shift in radio. It was a whole shift in radio when the South started making so much noise that the, uh, the program directors and everybody that's from the top down was just like, yo, we got to break these Master records P, first. Even when Master P and them niggas was rocking, when Juvenile had high. Right, in 98. They was rocking. Jay jumped on it. Yeah. Right. Made a new record. We now, that was one record. of the only rappers the, from New York that did that. We had Dipset. The niggas was rocking. Pen. Cam had a pink Range Rover and a pink fur and the big stupid belts with the rhinestones <laughs> on it. It was still New York shit, right? Mm-hmm. Even with, with the ASAP mob. Mm-hmm. There was still Harlem New York shit. What happened? Bobby Smurder was a New York nigga. He blew up. He blew up in New York. Right? What's a, what's a uh, young M.A.? She yeah. blew up too. It's New York. Nicki Minaj is New York. Same right. thing. Carl Carl blew up. I think when you I blame designer. Fuck it. I'm blaming designer. <laughs> <laughs> I blame designer. I'm blaming designer. <laughs> and this shit, you just, you sounded like down south. You sound like was, New York I no mean, but ASAP got the same flack though. When they did that with everything. ASAP Rachel, we ain't talking about that. It's that <laughs> Right. I mean, you got a billionaire girlfriend two kids. <laughs> you don't give a fuck. He's wiping hair out of the suspect nigga's eyes. He's oh, rich. rich. <laughs> nigga, super rich. <laughs> Shout out to Fern. Okay, okay. And then you got my man from High Bridge. What's, what's my, my, my nigga Fresh overnight? Montana? Hey, huh? Hey, Spook- hey, Boogie with the hey, hoodie. Hey, Boogie with the hoodie. It's a high-bridge Bronx nigga. He doing his thing. Sure. My man, Yo, Overnight. Boogie, Shout up? out Overnight. Overnight, what up? Uh, hey, Boogie, you need to pull up here, my nigga. Word. That's a fact. He's a Bronx high-bridge nigga. He don't make no qualms about here, Bronx nigga. Well, it's not. We're talking We're talking about two separate eras. You're talking about today versus the transition period that, that where Master P and them were doing their one-two at. Those are two totally separate eras. And I think what you're, because I agree with you, but I think it was a combination of two things. One, I think it was the thing you're describing. First of all, the, the OGs from New York not bringing up the next crop of talent. I think that definitely played. Puffy, it's your fault, nigga. Fuck it. I'm playing. I've heard, I'm, I'm, I'm heard in many theories throughout the years, but the one that stuck in my head is, you know, when when things changed out here as far as laws and cracking down on, on you know, the dealers and, you know, people who are funding a lot of stuff. Niggas getting football years was not there to teach the youngest. They not only was it there to teach the youngest, but they couldn't back up these projects right. that was coming out, but the South was still doing their thing, so they pretty much- and They were coming together. Bought New York. Right. It was coming together. Like, they came together, they came together. They formed on us, my nigga. Like, <laughs> they lined us up with their sights. Shot the shit out. Remember when you were talking they about. Like, yeah, they came through like. <laughs> white tees and knuck if you buck. 
Love all the records. Love all the records. Remember when you were talking about hosting the 95 Source Awards? Yeah. And, and we booed Outkast? We did. We booed the show. And Snoop had to get up there like bark. Well, Outkast told y'all the South got something. To say. Right, but we booed them when they we, won the Best New Artist Award. We, we New York booed out. It was in New York. And too short, you talked about how he was speaking to his people in his language. I think you put that with that and that New York arrogance combined mm -hmm. with the, well, we don't need y'all anyway. We can talk to, we talk, we talking to each other. We right. talking to ourselves. And you, GK. I and think that kind of, I think that And helped. you, GK. But I remember I getting that album early and I was like, yo, these niggas is dope. Where they from? Yeah. Port Arthur, Texas? Mm -hmm. I was like, this nigga Pimp C is incredible. Mm -hmm. This nigga Bun B, mm -hmm. incredible. And then Bun. Jay did the big Pimpin' record with him and it, yeah. you know, Pimp yeah. ain't want to do that record either. I heard. Let me want to do that shit. Pimp fuck with pop. Pimp say them nigga, J nigga Jay Z on the list. <laughs> <laughs> what list? The list of niggas Pac hate. I'm not doing that shit. That's why he not in the initial video. He did his shit in, in Miami with Gloria Velez. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. He didn't want. He, he wasn't standing next to Jay Z. But remember that that shit we was talking about? How like it used to be so many group records back in the days. You had the band from TVs, the Fantastic Fours, mm -hmm. Reservoir Dogs. Right. You don't oh. see that. Right? Oh, that's why dogs. Oh, Reservoir dogs is crazy. That's but you don't right. see that. Scenario. Right. Yeah. Scenario, Scenario. The remix. Yeah. All of that. You don't see that anymore. Yeah. It's, 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 I don't, it's not about liberty anymore. Yeah, but if you look at the South, mm -hmm. the South had no problem saying T.I., Jeezy, Gucci, Ross. Well, maybe not Gucci and Jeezy. Well, Jeez. I mean, yeah. <laughs> when, when did the they record... got a body behind that shit. Niggas yeah, was yeah. for a long time. When, when did the record start getting Shorter and shorter and shorter. Wow. I don't know, bro, because this shit fucked me. Them little, them little niggas, man. Them little <laughs> niggas seven in the building. Them niggas got ADD, son. <laughs> them niggas records is two minutes. Did the Motown, remember back when Motown first came out? Barry Gordy said our records can't be no more than, one more than two minutes and 35 seconds. Mm. They got a verse, a chorus, and that's it. One verse. Mm. Well, I listened to the shit that The Weeknd did with... Uh, 21 Savage, and they redid the I Don't Want to Know joint that right, Mario right. Wanna's did. Yeah. And this shit is like two minutes. <laughs> and then you start listening to records when niggas had four verses, yeah. three mm -hmm. verses. verses. You, niggas don't want to hear that. They mm -hmm. like this microwave music. And you and three minutes out, let me mm -hmm. eat it, gone. What's the benefits of that? I don't know. Because I don't think, I think the problem that we have is that we're not don't like their music. We do, but they're not making great albums. Right. They're making great singles. singles. And it's popular, but it's not talented. There's a difference between artistry and popular. We know that. Vanilla Ice sold 10 million albums. Singles trash. <laughs> we know that. And I know Ice. Ice I went Ice. to Russia with Ice. He had Ice Ice Baby. Yeah. Russia album, garbage. But he sold 10 million records. So because he is popular, right. he wasn't an artist. Right. There's a lot of artists out there that we could start talking about, underrated artists in hip hop that never sold 10 million. G-Rap is one of the nicest niggas to ever touch a microphone. Mm. He's never sold 10 million. Queens get the money. Right? Mm -hmm. Hammer was an ABC ad. You were not putting Hammer in nobody's top five. And I love that nigga. Yeah. I know that nigga since he was Hammer, the Holy Ghost boy. But he's in <laughs> nobody's top five. But he sold 10 to almost 20 million albums. There's a couple other rappers that they kind of oh my God. don't appear in people's top five, people's top Nigga, 10. Nigga, you don't, and you nice. You, you nice as a motherfucker with the lyrics. But are the niggas that make these lists going to say Mav Hoffa? No, because they fucking stupid. Or they will. But that's my point. But when hip hop changed, it became popularity over talent. Mm. Mm. A lot of these people on the rhyme right now don't have the talent. They have the popularity. And because everything is so quick on our phones and they get 14 Technology. million people following them and they put a record, oh, you got 14 million. <clears throat> we can increase that. We can change that over the streams and we'll make money. It's a difference, math, and y'all to getting up and walking outside and going to the store and buying an album. Yeah, facts. When Get Rich or Die Trying came out, I was next door neighbors with Chris Lighty. Go arrest his soul. 
Chris took me in the basement on his Apple computer and showed me the fucking album cover of 50 Cent's Get Rich or Die Trying. I'm like, this nigga is about to go crazy. The album came out on a Friday. I didn't get that album to like that Tuesday because I couldn't find it. Mm. It's yeah. different when you put your money down than when you stream it. Because if I stream, if I got Matt Hoff as my artist and I could get Matt Hoff on a Drake playlist, when Matt Hoff a record come up on a Drake playlist, he's going to get credit for it. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean that I wanted it. It means that it came up and I listened to it. Right. Mm -hmm. right? What is it? Like at least 30 seconds, 20 seconds? What is it? I don't know. Fucking. It, it, what is it? I think, it's, I think it's 30 seconds. 30 seconds. So if I listen to 30 seconds of math shit on the Drake place and say, fuck this record, he's getting credit for he the still street. Gets it, right? yeah. But it's different when you walk into the store yeah. and say, I want that. I want right. get rich and fucking die trying. So, the, so the, the, the problem would essentially be access. No, the access the is. The access it. to it. Because it's, you get it so quickly. Yeah. In contrast yeah. to back it, in the days, it, it you decreases go the value. It, it, right. it decreases right. the value, and right. every nigga that want to rap can rap. Right. They ain't got to get no cipher. They ain't got to stand on the corner and battle every fucking body that come through. They don't have to talk to an A&R. A&Rs are no more. Process is they don't have. They don't have a process. Mm -hmm. They can just rap. Yeah. Go in the bathroom, put some fucking... <laughs> Eight cartons yeah. on the wall. <laughs> Hang a mic. Make a rap and make a good hook. Because the hook is everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know? And, and that's it. I be fucking bitches always. I be fucking bitches always. I be fucking <laughs> bitches always. Yeah, I be fucking these bitches. I'm fucking these bitches. I'm a New York nigga. 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 You know, you can do that. I'm telling you, I'm coming in. I'm going to talk to you. My own group is called OWN. O-A-N. Old ass niggas. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to make me some money. But it doesn't. It's the point is. It doesn't have to be good. Like I told y'all earlier, right? I heard mm -hmm. LL. I was like, I can't do that shit. Because mm -hmm. the nigga was nice. Mm -hmm. They don't give a fuck about mm -hmm. nothing. All you got to do is put three letters in front of your name. O-A-N-A. -A. Oh, this nigga's with the O-A-N crew. They don't know what the fuck that shit mean. Right. Mm -hmm. It's not about hip hop no more. It's about streaming, algorithms, and money. And that's the reason there's been no album in 2023, no rap or album. single has hit number one. Yep, because it's fucking trash. It's because y'all don't know how to make a good album. Remember the first time you heard Illmatic? Mm. Remember how you felt? Mm. Remember the first time you heard fucking Get Rich or Die Trying? Or the mm, yeah. first time you heard Life After doubt. Death? I feel, mm. I feel for these kids. Because I'm ready like, to die. Damn, they. <laughs> Black this. Steel in an hour of chaos. chaos. Do you remember the first time you heard that shit? Yeah. I got a letter from the government. Oh my the other God, day I lost my I opened, fucking mind. They read it. It said they were suckers. They wanted me for, for their army or whatever. Picture me giving a damn. damn I, I said never. never. Here's a land that never not. gave a damn. <laughs> that nigga Chuck said, I'm on a tear where no tear should ever fall. My nigga just say he happy to be home. Yeah. He was on a tear where no, no tear, tear should ever, ever fall. fucking fall. So related to what they were going through and made that shit real. These niggas is talking about we were the drug dealing. These are the drug they users. These are the drug users. users. Yeah. I'm on burn Molly Perkins set, nigga. Molly Perkins set, nigga. <laughs> Why are you taking Molly and Perkins set? What the fuck is wrong with you? Going to sleep. Are you crazy? <laughs> <laughs> What's that? Y'all niggas dying of fentanyl overdoses and y'all niggas is getting high. You know, my man, I'm going to shout out my man DJ Mars from Atlanta. Mars said the difference in the music business now is the frequency that they're on. It's low frequency. Hank yeah. Shockley. That's his science. Is that what he said? No, it's no, low it's, frequency. It's it's the frequency of indulgence. Yes. yes. It's niggas that smoking hookah, sitting around, looking at other niggas that smoking hookah, sitting around. So you're not making inspiring music that make people want to want to get up, right? Right. right? When I was driving down 34th Street, and I didn't even know where that Puff was doing a uh, Sean John joint at Macy's. He was mm -hmm. waiting for his car. I pulled over. I said, Puff, was good? Hey, can you take me to the studio? My car's late. I said, get in the car. He said, you got a system? I was like, yeah. He pulled a CD out. He put it on. 
It was hypnotized, but without the Biggie, Biggie, Biggie kick, it was just that beat and Biggie rhyming like crazy. Oof. So I pull up, Puff jump out because they all stand in front of the studio. I try to pull over with the CD. That's it. I would have had it without the chorus. But that shit made me go, oh my fucking God. Mm-hmm. Well, the first time Jay said, I'm a hustler, baby. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The Neptunes made shit that made you want to get up. Jermaine Dupree and Jay did money in a thing. It made you want to get up. The frequency is so low that they slow it the fuck down. Even Bobby Schmurda, right? You wanted to do the Schmurda dance when you heard that right. shit, mm-hmm. right? Even with Young and May, they made you want to get up. The frequency is so oh. down now. Mm-hmm. That it don't make you want to get up. And that's the problem with this microwave ass music, man. Do, do you feel like um not only that, but I feel like not everybody. It's not nice everybody. Not right, everybody. Right, 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 right. We nice talk about him here. We nice talk about him here. Do you feel like because I, I feel like the guidance, there was guidance for us growing up, listening right. to these records. We caught jewels. We got the understanding of someone that was older than us. But now we're getting the understanding of someone who's 15 years old and they don't, they don't necessarily know life yet. They're giving a, a short amount of what they've, you know, what they've experienced and it's being repeated over and over and over and over and over and over and over. You feel like there should be more rappers that's older rapping? Yeah, I think, uh, I think um, older rappers should never stop making music. Never. I agree. For no reason. There's no, even if it don't sell. I heard daddy gonna say that one time. Don't, just don't stop making music. I think they get to a point where they feel like they don't know nobody wanna hear them, but they don't understand that we do wanna hear them. Like you should never stop making music. music right. Like I, I would love another Wu-Tang Clan collective album. I would love another Run DMC album. I don't give a fuck who don't buy it. I'm gonna get it. Right. I just <laughs> think that they have set such a precedence over what music really is, what talent really is, that they should never stop making music. And I think that even if you reach out, even if they don't want to hear you, just reach out. You know, I love when I see young niggas grab older niggas and make music with them. I think, you know, when when people did that, Kanye used to do that all the time, you know. He did records with Nas and Rakim and shit like that. But these younger niggas, they just, Sometimes they just don't a, do it because we didn't embrace them. Yeah, it's our fault. Not not just that, but a lot of these these the younger generation they're coming up, and the uh, my parents were not good parents. Ever. They don't even trust adults. Yeah, because they have no guidance. Right. Well, that's a lot of that is a three hundred and sixty degree circle that they gave our fathers and shit. They pumped crack into our neighborhoods. And then like our fathers are for football years. Right. So your fathers wasn't there to guide you, right? right. There used to be rules to gang shit, right? right. Mm. There used to be rules. You wasn't shoot no conductor in the face. A 12-year-old kid in New York just shot a conductor in the face for nothing. You didn't do that. Women, children, professionals were off yeah, limits. Yeah, didn't do that. Right. If you had beef, you had beef about money. You, you They're not even beef about even money. We beefed the name about of your money. Crew in front of a neutral. Right. You know, you went out. I went out at a time where if we was in the tunnel and you saw somebody that you had beef with, and your man was like, yo, I'm about to get him right now. You're like, chill. More mm-hmm. man police in here. We don't want to fuck us up as women over there. We don't want to get no woman involved in this shit. We'll catch them. Right. Mm-hmm. You didn't do the shit that they doing now. It's just a different mentality because we <clears throat> weren't around to teach them. We weren't around. Why do you get less time for pot of cocaine that you got for crack. It's all designed to break up the black family yeah. and to take the fathers out of the house. And that's a, a big reason why these kids is running wild right now, because we weren't there. Right. We weren't there because we got locked up forever. Forever. It's, that's just fucked up. When you got a nonviolent crime, why do you got to do 20 years? You ain't killed nobody. A nigga that do a murder get less time than a nigga that sold crack. Right. That shit is wild. Work. But you put it in our neighborhood. We ain't put it in our We don't nice. fly the planes. We ain't got no boats. We ain't got no boats. 
We ain't got no boats hey. on the Hudson River. How the fuck yeah. we got no boat coming from Mexico? Leaves <laughs> growing in <laughs> or Colombia. In America? Oh. Uh, there was one thing that you could change about hip hop or the rap game right now. What would it be? Now? Yeah. The uh, I would change the relationship between the old school and the new school. Because I feel like if they come together and learn from each other, if we can't front on them. They know algorithms. They know, all, they know the shit we don't know, right? right. The computer sat. I would change that relationship to where the older dudes would learn to listen to them and they would learn to listen to us because a lot of times... When you're a dad, happy Father's Day to all the fathers, they don't realize that we have lived a life before they have lived a life. So we have something to say for you to stay out of harm's way. Right. right? Don't make these mistakes that we made. And we should listen to them now because they know what's going on right now. Mm. I would change that. To absolutely change that. And I would <laughs> absolutely make sure Big and Pac was alive. Mm. Oh, absolutely. I want to know, so I'm going to go back a little bit, right, to, you know, you at Yo, Yo MTV Raps, then you went to Hot 97. Yeah, right? 93. 93. First, uh, my first question is, how long were you at Hot 97 before you went to 105, and what happened? I went, I went from Hot 97 to L.A. To L.A., okay. And then I stayed two years in L.A. It was the first time I got fired. Why? Wow. They, they brought in Steve Harvey. Mm. And... Mm. And Steve Smith, God rest his soul, called me and said, we're flipping the station. It was called Jamming 105. They played oldies. And we're going to build a station to go up against Hot 97. Could you come back? Mm. And at that time, I was the vice president of Magic Johnson Music. And I came back. <clears throat> if somebody, if you making, so when I was in LA, I only lasted almost a year or 92.3 in LA, but I had a contract guaranteed 800,000 a year. And they let me go, but they owe me 800,000, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm good. I'm right. chilling at home, I ain't doing shit. And the 800,000 about to run out, I'm like, oh shit, I need a job. <laughs> so I'm fucking with Magic, Magic's like, come over here, I'm forming a label. I wanna talk to you. I'm like, cool, He's like, you know music, you got connections, you had a font. And he had some other female artists, and I'm working for Magic for sixty thousand, but I still got money because I was making eight hundred thousand for a whole year. Mm -hmm. And then Steve Smith calls and is like, "I'm gonna get another five hundred thousand. Come back to New York." I'm like, "Okay." One hundred and five. Yeah, Power one hundred and five was born, mm -hmm. and they flipped it. So that's how I ended up back in New York City, because I came back because we helped build Hot ninety seven. So let's build this other news station to go against it. Why not? Mm -hmm. Wow. What was it like losing Ed Lover? Huh? What was it like losing Dr. Dre, said Ed Lover. Jesus yeah, I was Christ. about to say, what do you mean? Tripping. Well, Dre's still here. Dr. Dre? My partner? Yeah. 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 Wait, didn't he His mother to... passed. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, His yeah. mother pardon passed. Me. Pardon me. Pardon. Dre, is, Dre is still alive and well, but, but he, Dre, he was, he was having he's going through his own medical and his issues. Mother, and his mother passed, but he's yeah. having yeah. the medical issues. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, Dre is he's having the medical alive. issues. Salute. But, Salute. but his, his yeah. mom. Pardon me. Pardon yeah. me. Pardon I knew he was still alive. Dre ain't gonna let nobody tell me he's dead. Anybody want to know how I knew that? I was confused. No, no, no. Dre's still alive. I fucked that question all up. Yeah. Dre yeah. is always going to be a part of me as I am a part of Dre. Mm -hmm. But right now, Dre and I are working on the real documentary on your own TV rights from our perspective and how a dude from Westbury and a dude from Queens changed America and changed the world along with T-Money, right? So we're working on that. We've been, this has been a challenge, you know, trying to find people, different people to produce it. And Dre is always going to be my dude. Like, even if we don't talk every day, mm -hmm. if he needs something, he know I'm always there for him. Mm -hmm. And I'm always going to love him because he's my guy. Yeah, yeah. it's no me without him. It's no him without me. Y'all really did it. Like, y'all two dudes, y'all really did Man, something. Man, hip hop has been the best shit that ever happened to me in my life, bro. Yeah. I got two daughters with master's degrees because of hip hop. Mm -hmm. I haven't, since I was security officer, I think that was 85 to like, 89, 
all I've been making money off of was because of hip hop. Mm. Everything I did from 22 to 60, is, everything is because of hip hop. Mm. How many people can say that shit? Hopefully us in this room. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully I'm podcasting. Come on, Zach. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I'm I saw you hosting Come Carnegie on, Hall. Seth. Yeah. yeah. I saw you hosting Carnegie Hall. That was yeah. amazing. Yeah. I'm a podcaster because of Combat Jack. We all. Yeah. Rest in peace, Rest Combat in peace, Jack. Yeah, right? We all dipped our feet in the podcasting. Yeah. I'm making money on my podcast, bro. Mm -hmm. That's crazy, That's crazy to me. Niggas listen to what I gotta say. Who the fuck cares what I gotta say? <laughs> They've been listening to you though. All of us. They've been listening to you though, man. They've been listening to you. It's beautiful. You were there. You saw it. You I got was there for a lot of shit. You got the shit that you can't. You can't make up. A lot of shit. And you saw it firsthand. Yeah. The transition between this and that. The transition between that and this. Right. East coast to west coast. West coast to the south. You watch all that shit happen. I this watch a person, lot of niggas make a lot of more money than I do. And talk. you watch a lot of our, <laughs> Wow. God damn, I was trying to know what. If you didn't know back then what you know now. But you know now. What's stopping you? Huh? You know now. What's Conditions ain't the same. Conditions now. ain't the same. A lot of people look at you like when you old school, they write you off and they won't fuck with you. But thank God that I have the skills to stand on stage and do stand up comedy. And that's what's been keeping me going. Between the mm. hosting gigs and the stand up comedy gigs, and this year, the 50th anniversary of hip hop. Oh my yeah, yeah. god! We're making a yeah. fucking bag. <laughs> <laughs> 50th anniversary of hip hop. Next year, I'll probably be broke as a motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody cares about the 51st year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but this 50 year, I'm doing Essence. Mm. Wow. Nice, nice. I'm cultivating the stage at the One Music Fest in Atlanta. Dope. My own stage. Mm -hmm. I get to pick the artists. Man, come that on. shouldn't stop though. That shouldn't it's, stop. I know it's gonna, but that comedy it ain't shouldn't gonna never stop. No, I mean, cool with the comedy, but it shouldn't stop. You're an archive. We, you, you have so much of a knowledge base in this thing, and you're well, one of our greats. That man, shouldn't they're stop. They're about the here and now. You hey, are the here and now. You're bro, right here now, bro. Your girl Megan Thee Stallion gets seven hundred fifty thousand a show. Five thousand was all right with me. Shit, <laughs> seven fifty. <laughs> ain't giving no old school nigga like me those seven fifty thousand. Yeah, yeah, but she looks way I'm better in shorts like than you do. She, is right <laughs> you look, she looks way better in shorts. You got you get in your lane and you rock your lane and you stay in your lane. If you continue to make money in your lane, you good. Good. You come mm. all right, nigga. Yeah. <laughs> I'm good. Oprah, yeah. I know Oprah, nigga. I know Tyler Perry. <laughs> I'm good. I'm all right. Yeah. I'm good. I'm not mad. Uh, I live in a beautiful fucking house. My kids. I'm good. What yeah. the fuck about this? There it is. All right. Yeah, it is. I can't. I can't be for you. No, you can't be for you. Happy, my nigga. Yeah, if you I'm ain't still beefing, I happy. be for you. I'm happy. If I was a, a disgruntled nigga, it'd be different. But I'm happy. Looking far Listen, from dusty. I remember. Thank you. I remember my beard is gray as a motherfucker. I stopped dying my shit finally. <laughs> 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 I got off that just for men finally. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, listen, it is what it is. Mm -hmm. Because yeah, I got a lot of jet black joint was it was just too too powerful. It was too black, too right? Powerful. <laughs> it was too powerful. But, but, but niggas can Google me, right? Right. You Google Red Love, and my age comes right there. So why am I staining pillowcases with this black? <laughs> <laughs> You can't use it. You no know more, what really right? changed? I want to shout <laughs> these niggas out. The Silver Fox crew. Them niggas changed my life, nigga. Silver Fox. Yeah, crew. these are a bunch of niggas with beards that, and the bitches love these niggas. I was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me tell you something. I'm gonna be honest with you. I get more compliments on the gray than I did the black. Hmm. Way more. Oh, your beard is gorgeous. Well, thank you, sweetheart. And this is young girls. I'm like, okay. Yeah. Well, a girl told me I was giving off Zaddy vibes. <laughs> <laughs> I like Zaddy vibes. I appreciate y'all, man. Thank you, Yo, thank you my nigga. Thank you, bro. Thank you, bro. man. Appreciate you. We appreciate I'm giving off Zaddy vibes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Give this man his flowers, please. Listen, um, I remember those early mornings listening to you guys on the radio and starting off my day with, you know, hip hop. Well, that was, uh, Alex, Biggie, whatever. That was the beginning of my morning before I went to junior high school. And your contribution, your MTV raps, and helping to grow this thing to the point where somebody like me or us can eat. We appreciate you. Thank Absolutely. you, brother. Thank, Thank you all for having Thank me, you. man, because y'all have to. I appreciate it.
Thank you, man. I appreciate it. Word up. I appreciate y'all. Oh, I want to say shout out. Hold on before you cut the cameras. My man shout Mel with the hat. Yeah, check yeah, the hat. Yeah. Mel, check the hat. Check okay. the hat. Facts. Yeah, look at the bag. Yeah. Look at the bag, yeah. though. Look at the bag, though. Look at the bag, though. Look at the yeah. inside. Yeah. Yeah. Melvin King yeah. shit. Yeah. Mel brought us up here like a 98 Lexus, though, with the fuego. I still smell, smell like the cocaine sneakers. in the car. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Like sure. Hacks. All right. Man, thank y'all for having me, man. Yeah, everybody can't wait to hear back and forth like you. Bro. No, that's the remember. That's What's up, y'all? What you got to say? Roll crawl, Who's right? on the phone with Bradley Lisa and Dre? Yeah. Champion back in the motherfucking house. Here with a dick in your motherfucking mouth. Yeah. Roll call, hey. Roll call, hey. Roll call. Roll call. Come on, you can't tell me that wasn't classic, man. Yeah. My name is Eddie D, and I'm straight out of Queens. I'm the king of this shit. Niggas know what I mean. Hey. <laughs> it's hot for trap trapper turn smack rapper. Only smack rapper that you know is smack rappers. Got bars I can hang with the backpackers. Trap star, I don't hang with the backpackers. I'm in the hood with the work you heard. Making fiends leave earth you heard. Got your baby mama thirst you heard. Feel the flow, nigga, throw it in reverse. This the way you need to serve.